good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this very, very special live stream. And I'm not lying when I say this is a very special one. We have five artists, the top five winners from the most recent 3D challenge. Um, we had thousands of artists enter this challenge. You guys worked so hard to, 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 to work for this thing. Um, you made incredible art. You guys saw it in the top 100 in the all renders montage. And we're going to learn a bit about the unique workflows and the unique perspectives from artists all over the world um, from these five artists today, all right? So it's gonna be very informative. It's gonna be packed with information, with knowledge from different programs, um, different experiences, different workflows. You guys are gonna learn a lot along the way for this one. Um, I'm very excited for it. You know, this, this is really, what it comes down to um, after these challenges is, is learning as much as we can from these artists. So I'm very excited for you guys. It's good to see you guys in the chat. What's up everybody? Thank you guys so much for hopping in with us, um, especially on a Friday, on a Friday morning. You guys are, you guys are troopers. I really, really appreciate it. Um, so here's what we're gonna do, all right? Um, we're gonna let people roll in here. We got some people rolling in and whatnot. And um, we're gonna hop into uh, our first artist, Manuel, who goes by Rolljet on Discord. And we're gonna break down his chameleon scene. Um, it's an incredible scene. It's very well lit, very well rendered. It's all, you guys know, all of these are very well lit, very well rendered. Um, but before we hop into it, before we get um, to these artists, uh, I'm gonna throw it to our sponsor, you guys know Rococo has been a huge supporter of these challenges. Uh, y'all won suits throughout this. Um, they've given out gloves. They're always hooking y'all guys up with prizes. So um, shout outs to Rococo. So give it a couple minutes here. Uh, we got a word from them and then we're gonna hop right into it starting with Manuel talking about his chameleon scene. All right, so I'll see you guys in just a second. Don't move them butts. See you soon. Today's Boss Fight Winners Workflow Livestream is brought to you by Rococo, who you know for their motion capture suits, their smart gloves, and their facial capture technology. And we also know them for Rococo Video, the free to use, no suit needed, browser-based motion capture solution. But about one month ago, Rococo pushed the AI motion capture game to the next level by releasing the all new dual camera version of Rococo Video called Rococo Vision. Two cameras means higher capture quality, better depth perception, accurate ground floor recognition, and it also means no occlusion since your lens will be visible from at least one of those cameras. Any two combos of cameras are fair game, so you can use a DSLR and a phone, or a phone and a webcam, and you sync them up with these printable QR codes. You can export your data straight from the browser or use Rococo Studio to make tweaks, add characters, and even make retargeting adjustments, which honestly is huge because, my goodness, do I hate retargeting? Now, Rococo Vision is part of the Rococo Plus service, which means it's 240 bucks a year or 20 bucks a month, depending on how you break it down. But they do have a 14 day free trial. I linked it in the description down below for you guys. It's out right now, you can test it out. But without further ado, let's meet our Boss Fight 3D Challenge winners and learn all about their unique workflows. Yes. yes, Manuel, what's up, dude? Oh, what's up, dude? Hi, I'm great. How are you doing? I'm great, dude. Yeah, great. super solid. These streams are always the best, man. So thank you so much for hopping in. And I'm so excited to take a look at your art, man. It's so, so beautiful. I love it, man. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm a little wait, bit nervous, wait, wait. but we'll, we'll do this. You know, all good. All good. I think for me, too, there's always a nervous excitement before I hop into these things, too. You know, we're live. You know, so many... So many things could go wrong, but no, no, no. This is just me and you right now. We're talking about the art. We're having a good time. Um, let me ask you, man, where are you from? Uh, how, how old are you? How long have you been working in 3D? I'm based in Germany and I have around 10 years of experience in the 3D field. Um, and I'm 34 years old. Amazing, so, heck yeah. What got you into 3D? What was the thing that was like, you know, I think 3D is for me. I'm going to start experimenting with this. Uh, a friend of mine uh, started using Blender in university. And so this way I 
came up with 3D software and quite different things. Um, I've been into art and uh, drawing and things like that before. And I was blown away by the opportunity uh, 3D software gives you to create anything you can imagine. So I, I really was blown away in the first place uh, uh, that a single person can achieve such great things. Yeah, it, like I think That's it's very... It. It's very similar to what got me into it in the beginning too, was the idea that if you could think it, then you can create it. And you're yeah, basically yeah. only limited by your, of course we know technical ability, right? But yeah. that aside, you're only limited by your imagination. And I thought that was like yeah. so inspiring. And I think a lot of artists feel the same. So it's cool. It's cool to hear you say that. Um, and, and man, you've come so, so far such a long way what were like the first things Thanks. that you that you experimented with in 3d I, i'm sure it's... I, I generally i i made still images for i guess the first five years i didn't get into anything animating yeah so i i just modeled stuff textured it and rendered it but never came across really to to animate things so this began more when i when i started to study 3d design for three and a half years uh, uh, at that time i also started working with cinema 4d but when i when i finished uh, 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 my bachelor thesis i i immediately turned back to blender because it was it was my software um, and i love the community uh, that's also part of, that kept me going with 3d because there's so many people that want to help you and can help you uh, uh, free to share knowledge it's great so. yeah everyone is on the same team it feels like um yeah. what did you feel like you gained from using c4d for those three and a half years and going back to blender like obviously you you didn't get worse right but what did yeah. you take from the c4d side that you could have then applied to using blender uh, generally i have to say cinema 4d has awesome uh, motion graphic tools and at, back at that time, Blender didn't have anything comparable to it. And, and that was, uh, so, so there was also some modeling techniques I learned in cinema that I adapted and then I started using in Blender um, that I didn't know of before. So mm. there were uh, certain things uh, I could I could uh, get to Blender. That's good. With yeah, knowledge that, in my back. Super important. It doesn't matter like what part of your journey you're on you're always learning something and applying it to, the, to your future yeah. self yeah. so that's cool to hear um also all the, all the after effects stuff uh, i learned at this time so basically the comp and do motion graphics that's great yeah i want to ask you about your scene here so what what inspired this idea how did you come up with this idea of course when we launched the challenge you you know, it's boss fight. It's David versus Goliath. Like, how did you yeah. come up with yeah. this idea as opposed to anything else? First off, I, I didn't think that I would participate because I'm not uh, really a character animation guy. I'm more into, as, as I did uh, in my early years, more into still images, more into shading and texturing and things like that, uh, uh, making beautiful visuals, but not into rigging waiting weight painting and stuff like that and it's like hard stuff so, man it's all difficult yeah, stuff it's it's the really difficult stuff so so i i thought twice about participating but then i, I said to myself uh, let's try it let's push it and and see what we can achieve uh, and that way uh, i thought about what could i do and i'm generally uh, natural uh, uh, um, keeps uh, inspiring me so i thought about making some some creature and i i just went online and uh, looked for references and a friend of mine um at that point i also start uh, usually and and making a, a board where i just throw in some references and stuff like that yeah and I, I came up with the idea of a chameleon um attacking a fly and i saw two wonderful cgi animations uh one by toma eschett uh, where a chameleon catches different uh, uh, different insects and the insects keep getting bigger and bigger and the, the chameleon can't really do it in the end and another one was this one with a more stylized but also very cute looking chameleon it's called uh, a short film it's called pascal or in the daryl sorry um and these two films were, were so funny in my mind and I, I i thought let's try a mixture of both of them um a little stylized character that isn't really super hyper realistic 
and combine it with uh, pixel-like uh, surfaces and shading that looks realistic. And that way I, I ended up with this idea. And um, yeah, then I, I, I started doing a first block out. Uh, I had a lizard made, that I made some years ago that was the base mesh. Uh, I started to sculpt a little bit uh, and do it. Uh, and here you can see this was the, the first uh, base mesh okay. of, the, of the chameleon. Uh, so really low poly, um, nothing fancy here. And I, um, everything mirrored. And uh, this stuff I put into your, to your tablet scene and looked, can this work? Um, the side to the sizes work and looked which template of the three you, you gave um, would be the best. Um, yeah, because yeah, we and had, then after. Um, just Sorry? to, hit, just to hit your point on that, so there were three starter files. There was a close, medium, and far, depending on you know the kind of scene you wanted to create. So I think it looks it looks to me here you went with the close the close up scene. Yeah, ex exactly, um, because it was uh, such a narrow scene, and I wanted to to have a really impactful attack on the fly. So I, I went with a with a, a small distance between the two characters, and. After that, I, I didn't really go for a straightforward pipeline uh, because I thought to myself, when I'm not able to, to achieve the lighting and the surfaces and the look of the, uh, the whole thing to look the way I want it to look, I, I won't start animating and stuff and, and do secondary animation stuff when I'm not uh, um, super sure that I can pull out something cool and something beautiful. So at this point, I also started uh, uh, and started some shading tests and things like that. And um, I have a photo here that was uh, a render I took about a week after I started the project. So the the, the geometry of the, of the chameleon is still really low poly. It's more it's shading that uh, uh, sells the story and sells the realism. So mm. I started with this uh, when I saw the image and I saw, OK, this could lead me to something. Um, I was even more ambitious and started uh, working more time on it and, and, and started with the other stuff. So then I thought about the, the fly. Um, fly is basically... Um... Well, hold on. I'm going to stop you here. I'm going to stop you here. Okay. Because <laughs> I, I think what you just said is very important and I want to highlight that. And I think it's something that I could even take advice from because go back to that image that you had. Yeah. So... I find myself needing reassurance that what I'm making is gonna work and it's gonna mm -hmm. be cool. And I think that's what I love so much about texturing in 3D is that it was a pretty quick payoff, um, yeah. especially using like a HDRI to light your scene, hitting render and having a nice yeah. texture <laughs> with some surface imperfections. It just looks so good so quickly. And that gives me the boost that I need to continue going forward on this big journey, right? Whether it be, um, you know, the project you're working on. In this case, yes, on. the project you're working on. So what yeah. you did so here is you actually put together an almost, like, I guess, would you consider this like a style frame or something, right? Um, yeah. It's a pretty clean looking version of what you're going to create. And when you can prove to yourself that it's looking nice, close up, kind of close, close up to up. the beginning, then you can deal with the more difficult stuff a little bit later and give yourself the reassurance that it's working, it's working, right? Yeah, yeah. That's exactly uh, w what I also needed. And and this is also the the time when I, I shared it to other people and, and said, hey, have a look at it. Yeah. How does it look? Can that work? And uh, this is the time when I also felt uh, the first time uh, enough confident that I, I know end result would, would get good if I have time. Yeah. It was an important step and therefore uh, the tongue, nothing is animated here. It's just a, a still image, but it, it shows to me that I that it can get really great. Yeah, yeah. I think in my art um, for the challenge, which I honestly wasn't able to finish, I think I was missing this step. I, th I think personally, I could have used a final look step early on. Yeah. And I think for me, I was like searching for that look 
for the entire process and I was never quite happy with the look and it took so long to get to a point where this stylized look felt right and it never quite did and I think it was just a marathon that I wasn't able to finish and I think having having something like this at the beginning of the project would have really helped so it's it, it's it really cool. pushes your confidence yes yeah yeah that's very true man that's very true okay so the fly all right so, so tell me about uh, this fly the, the fly is uh, isn't that that crazy um basically a million for one second it's just a, a humanoid character i took <laughs> and i edited uh, that not that smile, humanoid dude. anymore a little smile you know i added some tentacles uh on the head and uh the little mouth coming out and did wings and stuff like that and this is living his best nothing, life like yeah nothing nothing fancy here um when i started animating it i i did some ambient thing animations uh, with the tentacles here moving around and the mouth kind of chewing um at this point i also want to mention that the discord server is really oftentimes a great help i had five whip threads uh, where I, I showed my progress and at one time, one guy said, uh, hey, let's do a, a blinking animation that would make everything even more natural. And I haven't really thought about this at the beginning. But then I thought, yeah, every great CGI animation has a kind of blinking. So I tried it and adopted this. So great shout out uh, here to the to the server and the guys helping out there. Um, yeah. It's good to hear, man. So, That's cool. Yeah, That's yeah, nice. Yeah. And basically, it's just an, an IK rig with hands and and I think two crazy characters rooting around uh, on a spline. I think two crazy here. Okay, um, so you modeled your chameleon. It looks like you got uh, something for the tongue, and then you modeled the fly character. So once you had kind of a base uh, environment, which we clearly saw from that image you just showed, you have yeah. the main characters like what's what's next for you do you continue building out the environment do you start animating um where where does I, where do you want to go from here from here um i i had the benefit that i already made parts of the environment for the still frame and i knew okay uh, these uh, assets will be static most of them the rocks and stuff like that and i also there i got most of the assets online from poly heaven a great so site uh, I, I want to mention uh, for me the best site for eight year eyes by by far and oh, yeah. also um a, a growing library of textures and models and also photo scanned uh, cliffs so i i took some stuff from them it's all free and, too and right it, it's all, every even for commercial use that's that's sick. so that that was a great thing so the environment uh, uh, is mostly from that I that I had. Um, Heck yeah. Another thing that I wanted to mention is uh, uh, the tongue because the tongue gave gave me headaches. But at first, I, I wanted the the fly to to not make a knot in in the tongue. But in 120 frames, it wasn't possible to to show that much motion. And yeah. Um, so I, I decided to to let the fly wrap it around. And I thought, how can I technically do this thing? So uh, this is a little hack I I made, and I wanted to share. Um, it's basically a cloth sim, flat cloth that the ends are pinned to an empty, to a null object. Um, I, I, let me go to start. The cloth sim and, and it's hooked to these empties and these empties are animated to move around an obstacle. And basically that's the base of the Chong animation. Cloth sim with a flat surface. And after that, after as as usual, when, when, when uh, simulating stuff, you have to... <laughs> do it try and error style and and have a lot of iterations but yeah. then finally i had one um i exported this as an alembic file and put it in my file then gave it uh, some thickness to it and displaced it that's basically uh the tongue how i made the tongue can we see and, uh, can, I, can can we see like the final final version of uh of your render yeah uh, maybe i can switch on to rendered view here i think it won't crash hopefully but I can also show yeah, this works, this works. your friend here. So, okay, so it's a cloth so, sim, extruded, displacement. Um... Displacement, then I duplicated uh, the whole tongue and uh, gave the displacement a slight offset with another noise texture. 
And this gave it uh, another shader with more translucency to have that kind of gooey, liquidy feel around it. So Dude, it's that's so good. Two yeah, times the, the material mesh. on that is so nice. Uh, and uh, it's a lot of subsurface scattering that that tells the story, I guess. So a nice little way of, of tricking how, how to, to achieve something like that. And basically, as you can see here, um, it's really going just going through the mouth. It's not connected to the main body. <laughs> it's it's uh, with a gradient texture faded out and it, it gets out of the mouth. And because the mouth is so so dark, you can't really tell that it's not connected. So it's it's a lot of hacky stuff that I did, but at the end you can't see most of the hacky stuff, so it's working. Yeah, I love it. You cheat it, man. You just cheat it and, until yeah. it works. It doesn't yeah. have to be perfect. How did you do, yeah. go back to your final render, how did you do the saliva in the corners of the mouth? Uh, that's basically a, a duplicate of the, the mouth topology. So I, I just took... A, you mean this? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a duplicate of the interior part of the mouth, so it was also connected to the to the armature to the to the bones. And um, after that, I deleted. Um, I connected both sides of the mouth and uh, deleted a lot of faces and just kept the single strands connecting the top and the bottom. Yeah. And it gave them a, a wiggly displacement uh, that I could animate in time. So it it wiggles at the end when it's hit by the yeah. stick. So that's another hack, I guess. It's it's not really that complicated. And um, also, uh, with a solidify a thickness given to it. Yeah, it, it, dude, it works. So it's not simmed. It's just animated. No, it's the display. not simmed. It's it's not simmed. I can uh, maybe I can show it. It's so good. Um, look here. It's uh, quite quite heavy on the machine. So hopefully. Ah, oh, yeah, here you can see the mesh. Whoa. Basically, oh, so part of the mouth yeah. that is also connected to the bones. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. All right. So I have I have so many questions. I'll continue to ask them, but yeah. Um. You got your tongue figured out. Okay. You have the fly animated around this thing. Um. At what point did the like? the stick going into the chameleon's mouth come about? Was that always something that you wanted to do from the beginning or did you discover that through just creating? Uh, that was uh, something I wanted to do. I wasn't sure if I can pull it off in the 120 frames. Yeah. Uh, because of the uh, slow-mo I also had to integrate into the scene and therefore I wasn't that sure, but I wanted it to, to have that uh, special uh, uh, which at the end uh, um, and even can can the chameleon switches colors so i have that that gag uh, at the end man so, i i'm not gonna say yeah. that's what topped it off for me um but honestly it kind of did because if it was just looping around yeah. and then the fly flew away like it would have been nice you know but dude that retaliation that counter move Mm -hmm. that that really took it to the next level because a lot of the renders you know the majority of the renders that we saw it was just a face-off you know just two people mm -hmm. static um mm -hmm. and then a lot of the renders also had a thing where like the artist would just do the cool thing right at the end like they would slow-mo the mm -hmm. wrong part mm -hmm. they wouldn't slow-mo the explosion they would slow-mo like uh, the wand casting a spell mm -hmm. and the explosion happened at the end. It's like, no, I want to see the explosion in slow motion. Yeah, yeah. But like you had an A and a B and a C going on with this. Like we are setting up uh -huh. even the top with the other fly distracting him, right? Mm -hmm. Like flying and hitting the eye. There's so much going on. And uh, that was also a, a tip from a, another Discord user with a distracting fly. Okay, tell me, about that. Tell me about that. Tell me about that. Uh, if I don't know his username, but he said, "Hey, the the comedian looks to the left side that strong at the at the beginning. Uh, where where is it looking?" And mm -hmm. that that was the the, the reason why I, I put it in the the second fly flying to the left side. So another shout out here. <laughs> the, That's great, to the guys. There and it extends yeah. the eyeball too. How how did you do that? How did you like animate the eyeball bulging like this? 
Uh, as I said earlier, the, the rig of the chameleon is really basic. It's just, uh, I guess, 20 bones and uh, a simple animating, but I, I kept more focus on pose uh, morphs and then they are called shape keys mm. to, to make a little smile, to make the eye bulge out, um, to, to uh, sneeze, to also the, the impact basically that uh, that's happening at the end is also just a, a shape key that I that I sculpted in and then could oh. uh, could animate the slider that this was isn't a bone animation it's just shape keys oh, so this way this way it was much easier for me to animate as I said I'm not really the greatest animator so I, I also cheated with this stuff and uh, also the eyeballs the eyeballs got uh, separate bones on each side two bones for each eye so I could uh, literally just go in and um, take the armature and it just uh, uh, scale up the the bone of the eye to get that effect that scaling effect yes and, and yes. even to scale it just in one dimension or this is the right one i guess also basically that's just uh, that just can, uh, a little uh, scale animation on the bone can you do all of us and, a favor please can you just like both of those eyeballs and like bulge them up to the max i just i just want to see that real quick <laughs> Uh, let me switch here. Oh. Like that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gotten a bit, a bit too far. It's like, yeah. uh, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger in um, whatever that movie was. I forget. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good times. Very good times. So basically, um, that's uh, that was one point. Uh, another point I, I wanted to, to to show is the secondary animation I did uh, with the spines here. Yeah, um, yeah. Tell me about secondary animation. Why is it important? Because it sells the story. I guess you you shouldn't overdo it. Uh, it shouldn't be stronger than the the real animation, but it adds a lot of realism and adds. Yeah, it's it's uh, the characters come alive when you add the secondary animations like that. I guess. Even though I'm not that great of an animator, but uh, uh, no, well put, I think also alive, this yeah. works in 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 uh, in this. They are they are not that extremely visible, but when you when you look at them, it has this fishy kind of uh, uh, look to it, um, and that sells the story. So this is an add-on in Blender called Spring Bones, which lets you animate that. You you basically just uh, animate the base bone. And everything else wiggles dynamically, so you don't have to animate anything besides the the first bone. And the rest uh, oh. keeps wiggling like like a physics uh, simulation, basically. Oh, that's really really handy. Shoot. Okay, that's great. Um, yeah. any other? Okay, so we have we have a handful of minutes left. Um, do you have any other? Well, let me let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. What was the most difficult part of this project for you? What was like the biggest hurdle? <laughs> Keep going uh, with the animation stuff because I'm not that good at that. Uh, and that's also when when uh, uh, feedback is very important to get feedback on your on your animations. And I had uh, colleagues uh, watching the the animation and said, "I uh, the chameleon should lean backwards when it's hit by the by the stick and things like that." Um, because you sometimes you you get don't have a you need a fresh eye on it and uh, this helps sometimes so that was the the trickiest part I guess because shade, uh, shading and lighting and things like that uh, I'm I'm comfortable with so uh, that's not the problem it's more the the movement and and the speed of movement and things like that 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 were hard for me. Yeah. I see. Okay. Um, hey guys, in the chat we have a handful of minutes left with Manuel. Um, hit me with an at Ponisher if you have questions for him. Um, hopefully the at Ponisher just makes it a little easier for us to see your questions in the chat. But um, I want to get your guys' questions in here while we still have a little bit of time. I'll check back with you all in a second. Um, but Manuel, yeah. what, what would you One... say to, to artists who are afraid to enter these challenges? Who feel like, ah, the artists are You have good. nothing to lose, good. basically. Um, the community is great. You you can learn, and you don't have to make it to the top 100 the first time. But you you can get great feedback on your work, and it's a lot of fun. And there's nothing to lose. So uh, if you're f fun doing this kind of stuff, 
try it. Don't be afraid of it. Um, I think that's a great piece I have, of advice. I have one last scene open that I wanted to show. Let's do it. This, this was a difficult part um, to incorporate the slow motion part. And because I had uh, particle simulation, I had cloth simulation, I had rigid body simulations, I had uh, shape keys and uh, animated bones. And therefore I would have hundreds of keyframes to adapt to really slow down my whole scene because I would have to, to uh, put a hand on every single keyframe. So basically what I did, I exported the whole scene as an Alembic file. Yeah. And the nice thing is to re-import uh, the Alembic file. You have this slider, uh, it's called override frame. It basically tells us uh, uh, which time in the scene it's uh, showing at the moment. So at the end, I had my whole scene in another scene and I had one single F curve controlling the whole time of the scene. Whoa. So basically, this is the, the time of the scene. And I also, I could even go reverse in time. Uh, I uh, can let it go uh, uh, exactly at the same time as it was before, but I can also keep it still um, or even go reverse when I play this. And this works with everything I did, with particle simulation, with cloth simulation and everything. So I had the total freedom to, to uh, start the slow motion effect right when I wanted it and let it go exactly when I needed it to. Dude, to that's be. perfect. That's perfect, yeah. man. Wow. That was, so uh, it really actually did it a bring in, for me. Did it bring in your your foliage? Like everything. It brought in the whole yeah. scene. Yeah. yeah. It, basically everything that was animated. So the grass was animated yeah. and bended. Uh, the leaves were, were falling and, and moved in the wind. Uh, basically everything, uh, the, the the mouth, the tongue, everything besides the rock, basically. The rocks weren't uh, moving, so these were ex imported separately, but everything else was imported with an alembic and uh, overwritten here. And uh, the, the alembic is even capable of vertex interpolation, so um, you, you can have sub-steps in between the frames and even have no problems. Wow, okay, so, so basically... This was, was a re really great way. Yeah, you converted all of your hundreds of keyframes into one keyframe, essentially, by basically, exporting basically, the Olympic yeah. and controlling yeah. the, the speed. That's so good. That's yeah. so good. Um, that's that's a great takeaway. So let's let's take a look at chat here. You guys had some questions for Manuel. Let's see. Um, of these questions, what would you have done as a second option? What made you think of using empties for so much of the project um system specs um can you do the tongue from scratch probably not we don't have time for that um <laughs> any of these stand out to you um maybe we'll start with what made you think of using null objects so much to animate with ah it's basically a lifesaver when when i ever i start animating and and moving around things uh, it gets more complicated when you uh, move the ob object itself so i i generally i put everything in empties and uh, so uh, the clause the sim the 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 points are parented to an empty that is controlled uh, other characters are parented to empties the tongues are separated parent to empty so Basically, if I, I can't really think of a workflow where I don't use empties. So it's just like easier to control, course. basically. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's that's great. Yeah, that sounds pretty basic, but honestly, I'm like every time I'm like, oh, how do I animate? It's getting complicated. Like I want to do X and Y and Z and animate them all separate. It's like just different different null objects is a great answer. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, also for for things like camera movement and animation. Yes. Null objects are, are really great. Uh, let's see, let's see. Um, all right, what system are you working on and how much time did all of this take you? Uh, I'm working with Windows 10 and I have uh, two 30 in 90 graphic cards for rendering. Yeah. So I think I, all, all the project took me about working time about 70 to 80 hours i guess um render time was one night i guess 10 hours maybe cool yeah amazing man amazing how how close did you push it uh to submitting what did you submit on the last day did you submit on no the... no no I, I submitted uh three days before before, three deadline, days before. I guess. okay solid solid yeah there's definitely uh, a bell curve of like of yeah. uh, of all of that uh, stuff so it's it's good three days before solid i like that but um <laughs> 
Man, I think that's about all the time we have for Manuel. Thank you so much um, for, well, congratulations first off uh, for thanks, winning. Thanks. And uh, third place, yeah. And and man, seriously, thank, thank you, you for having me. It was really a pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. Like, please come by next year uh, in February. We'll be doing <laughs> another one. Uh, you know, we'd love to have you. And uh, thanks for being on the Discord server and inspiring the community with your art and um, being so helpful and open and and uh, just being solid on the Discord, man. That's super cool. Um, I wish thanks. you the best. Thanks. Thank you for staying up late uh, over in Germany for this. I really appreciate it. And please don't be a stranger, okay? Yeah. Is there for anything sure. that you want to say to the chat before you bounce? Or uh, are you feeling good? Like, job well done here. Yeah. I think uh, one thing is uh, come to the Discord server. There's a lot of great stuff there. People are, are really helpful. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, which there is a link, by the way, for you guys down in the description below if you want to do that. Um, all right, Manuel, we'll let you go, brother. See Have you. Have a great one. I'll catch you catch soon, all right? Bye. Later, man. See you. Ah, super solid, super solid. It's so good. I love it. We're, we're in it. We're, uh, you know, chatting about all the good art. So next up, we have an artist, um, I believe is Robin is next, our fifth place artist. And he is on vacation. He was not able to join us live today, but he recorded an incredible breakdown for you guys. Um, it's packed with detail. Um, you know, I watched it a couple times. It's so good, so informative. And I know that you guys are gonna get a bunch from it. It's a very different kind of approach. All these, what I love about all this, by the way, is that all five of these artists, they do similar things, but they have completely different workflows, different, um, different specialties, different tips and tricks to offer you guys. So there's something to learn from every single one of these. We just finished our first one, Manuel, and we're hopping in. We got four more to do. Um, I'm gonna throw it to Robin. He is gonna take on, uh, take you guys on a journey here. So kick back, grab a drink, grab a snack, and uh, let's get ready to learn some cool stuff. Uh, we'll throw it to you, Robin, go for it. Hi everyone, I'm Robin Pittelko. I'm from Germany and I'm the creator of the Tomb Raider theme video. Now, even though I'm writing my master thesis right now, I still decided to take part in this challenge because I finally wanted to submit something. I tried to participate in the previous challenges, but I always give up. And that's because I set unrealistic goals for myself. Sometimes my PC couldn't even handle it anymore. So this time I decided to pull through no matter what. I promised myself to finish it and to submit it. And this is exactly what I did. And this is why it makes me even more proud to um, to got the fifth place right away. So thank you very much again. Now, before we start, I wanted to say sorry that I can't be there for the live stream, but when the live stream takes place, I'm unfortunately not at home. So this is why I'm recording some material for you now and I hope you find it interesting. And if you have any question, you can always write me on Discord. So yeah, let's start. Immediately after seeing Clint's announcement video, for whatever reason I had an image of a temple scene in my head. I wanted to do something with some kind of Mayan god in the middle of the jungle. I also thought about the bosses of Far Cry 3 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, so I knew relatively quickly what my scene would involve. But I had no exact image in my head, so I decided to just start with something I knew I wanted to have in my scene. I searched for a few images from the internet and put them together to make a reference board. At that time, you could already try out the new stable diffusion model SDXL on a website. So I typed in terms like Maya Warrior or God or Cinematic Jungle Scene just to gather inspiration for the look of my scene. From each of the pictures you see here, I took an idea and put it into my scene, especially for the design of the boss. This picture here is especially responsible for how my scene looks now. For example, the orange trees, the orange volumetric glow, the rocks in the foreground and the moon. After I gathered enough pictures, I had a pretty exact image in my mind how I wanted it to look like. But I didn't know what I wanted to happen in the scene. All I knew was that I wanted the boss to attack in some form with the hero evading in a cool way. Maybe it would have been better if I decided on that earlier on, but in that case it thankfully worked to figure it out while building the scene. 
Before I started building the scene, I was looking for assets. The first time I decided not to do everything myself so that it's enough time to finish by the end of the month. I was looking for temple assets because they would be a big part of my scene and this is what I found. I added the assets to my file and tried to build a basic scene. I changed the ground a bit, added the side walls and positioned the temple. I also added placeholders for the rocks and the vines in the foreground. After the basic scene was done, I used the botanic asset library to add some plants. I especially wanted to see how the orange trees would look like in my scene. I added more plants like palm trees, bushes, grass and ivy to give the scene an overgrown look. For the grass I quickly created a geometry node system that lets me draw grass onto the ground. That way I had very easy control over where the grass is growing. For the sky, I used some pictures I found online to use as a texture on a plane, since I could not find any fitting HDRIs. The same thing goes for the moon. I wanted it to be very moody and cloudy with the big round moon shining through. Now, since the camera is going in a circular motion from left to right, I had to fill in the sky on both sides by adding half of a cylinder with another sky texture on it. I then blended it into the plane with the main sky texture using a gradient texture. The next thing I did was adding lights to see how I could best light the scene to get a look similar to the AI images. So I added a blue colored sun lamp as moonlight. I also added a large rectangular light for the right side of the temple to enhance the moonlight in specific places. This is not really realistic, I know, but I thought it looks better that way. Then I added a point lamp to each of the places where the fire would later burn on the columns. I added an orange rectangle light in the middle of the scene, which would later be responsible for the edge lighting of the characters. I used the default boss fight figures to see how the light might look in the end. As in the reference images, I wanted the blue light from the night sky to shine as indirect lighting on the characters. That's why I also added two blue rectangle lights above the boss and the hero. Even though I added a volume to get some fog in my scene, I was missing the big orange volumetric effect I saw in the reference pictures. That's why I decided to fake it by using a circular gradient texture on a plane and scale it up until it looks like fog that gets illuminated by some orange light. Also, while I was building the foreground, I always kept the composition in mind. For example, I wanted to create a natural vignette by positioning and lighting the plants, temple assets and rocks in such a way that the scene appears a bit darker towards the edge of the image. After I was happy with the basic scene, I started to replace all the placeholders for the plants, vines, rocks and so on. I quickly added some skeletons lying around using an asset I found online and now the basic scene was done. All I had to do now was adding the characters and adding some details and effects. I asked myself what the next most important thing is I need to take care of. I chose the boss because the viewer will be looking primarily at him. I started with a muscular male base model, however the proportions were not quite as I imagined the boss. Therefore I shortened his legs and made him much wider at the shoulder. Since I didn't know what exactly his armor should look like, I just started with the face. I wanted his face to resemble one of those Mayan wooden masks. Since I couldn't find a mask I liked on Google, I had SDXL help me again. After making the image of the mask symmetrical, I roughly modeled the mask and used the image as a texture, which gave the mask the details. After that, I started modeling the body armor. To be honest, I had no structure here. <laughs> I just started with the breastplate and added more and more parts until I was satisfied with the armor. Since the armor in the reference images had some kind of structure, I downloaded a tribal pattern and used it as a height map and color mix. Also, the metalness was controlled with this. With the noise textures, I created an old, somewhat dirty look and introduced irregularities into the material. Most of the parts then got a metal edge. Here and there I looked at the reference pictures every now and then as to what constitutes tribal armor. For example from this picture I have the belt thing with the round part in the front. And from these pictures I took the idea of the crown with the metal feathers. I added a few details here and there and then the boss design was finished. I then downloaded a spear model and adapted the style and colors to my character. 
All I had to do now was to rig the character. I did this with Rigify and then added some extra bones to be able to animate the armor later. After the boss was finished, I downloaded a Lara Croft model from the internet. I found this asset. Since this character was already rigged, all I had to do was to adjust the materials and make it a bit more realistic. The next most important step was the animation. At this point I still didn't quite know how the characters should move, so I looked through the animations at Mixamo and found this animation. I thought this animation would be perfect for the spear. So all I had to do was find an animation that would allow Lara to dodge in a cool way. And this is what I found. Since Lara needed something to prop herself up for this move, I decided to use a stone from the ruin. From that second on I could picture Lara spinning in slow-mo over the spear as it's smashing the stone into a thousand pieces. I downloaded the animations and retargeted both characters. Since the animations didn't fit perfectly yet, I adjusted both. For example, I changed the angle at which the boss swings the spear. I also had to adjust the head movement because I didn't want the boss to lose focus on Lara. I did the same with Lara so that she looks at the boss before and after the flip. Now the basic animation was there. After that I took care of the secondary animations like the finger position, Lara's hair and the individual armor pieces of the boss. All these things I animated by hand which took me a lot of time because I'm not an animator. I understand the basic principles of animating mass and gravity but I have to admit that I animated the individual pieces of armor and Lara's hair only through trial and error. After playing around with the animation for several hours I was finally satisfied with it. Finally, I added corrective shape keys here and there and made corrections to the animation. Now it was finally time for all the effects and to make the scene look more epic. I started with the rigid body simulation of the stone. First I split the stone into many small pieces using self-fracture. I could then collide these with the spear, causing the individual pieces to fly across the scene. However, the breaking of the stone still looked very boring, as all the details were missing. I added a particle system that spawns many small stones as soon as the spear hits the stone. I tried to match the speed and direction to the rigid body simulation. I then repeated the same process with the skeleton I placed in front of the stone. Now finally came the part I had been looking forward to all along. The simulation of the dust cloud when the spear shatters the stone. For this I used Ambergen of course. I imported the rigid body simulation that I had previously converted to keyframes, as well as some scene objects that would serve as colliders for the smoke. For example, the spear, the wall, the floor and some rocks. The rigid body simulation served as the emitter for the smoke. I played around with the settings for a long time until the smoke looked like dust from the shattered stone. All I had to do then was to save the smoke as a VDB sequence and paste it into Blender. I also created a second dust simulation that represents the dust kicked up from the spear. I basically used the exact same steps, only this time I animated a flat object along the ground and used it as an emitter in Embergen. Now it was impossible to play the animation in real time, because the viewport became very slow after pressing the play button. I also used the object I animated along the ground to swirl some grass in the air. For this I used a simple particle system with high air resistance. Again I started Embergen to render out fire texture sequences for the fire on the columns in the background. For this I used the default Embergen fire with slightly changed values. I imported the sequence as a texture on a plane and made sure that they were always oriented towards the camera. I then offset the sequence per plane so that the fire doesn't move in the same way. Using geometry nodes, I created a particle system for fireflies flying around in the scene. I then made them blink in the shader using a sine wave. As a last step, I wanted to add birds flying across the sky using a video on a plane. After moving one or two things around, I decided that I was happy with my scene and called it done. Since I was already pretty happy with the rendered scene, I didn't have to do a lot of compositing. For that I used Blender exclusively. I added glare filters for a fog glow effect and adjusted the colors a bit. 
Although I had already created a natural vignette, I still added a conventional vignette and chromatic aberration. This way the render got the final cinematic look. When I added the smoke, my render slowed down quite a bit. That's why I wanted to render the animation with a render farm. However, you can only send it to a render farm if you put all the external data like textures, cache files and VDB sequences in a relative folder structure, including the blend file. It took me quite a while to set up this folder, but when I finally did, I then uploaded the folder to the render farm and rendered out the final animation. Alright, that's basically it. I've learned quite a few things, especially about my own workflow and now I want to share with you guys my four key takeaways, beginning with setting yourself some realistic goals. So think about what you can do and think about what you can't do. Think about the time that you have left. This is very important. The second thing is use assets. Um, there's absolutely no shame in using assets. For the longest time I thought using assets made by other people will make the project that I'm currently working on not really my project anymore. Um, the third point is add the most important stuff first to your scene. You can always refine it later. If you don't do that, there's a good chance that your motivation will leave you just because you don't see any progress. And the last point is if your PC can't handle the rendering, think about using a render farm. Um, it can be expensive at times, yes, but where's the point in spending, in my case, 50 plus hours on a project without ever having some kind of output that you can be proud of. So yeah, this is my project. I hope you found it interesting and I hope you're motivated for the next challenge. So have fun. Bye. Heck yeah. Thank you, Robin. I'm sad that we couldn't have you live here, but dude, that's a complete breakdown. Thank you so much for putting that together. Um, I know you guys appreciated that. I hope you enjoyed it. I, I know you enjoyed it. Let's let's get real. Um, so for any of you guys wanting to follow any of these artists today on the stream, I got all their info linked below for you. Um, and later when I go through and do the time codes of the video, I'll have it all separated by the artist. So you guys can come back here. This video uh, will be on the channel forever. So uh, if, if you need to bounce out or if you're just bouncing in, then uh, we'll have the full video for you guys to come back to later. So we are gonna move on to our third artist. This guy got, let me see if I do this right, fourth place. Um, let's, uh, let's, let's meet him. Let's hop on over. Thank you for the switch. We did it, yes. <laughs> What's up, Steven? What's up? Steven Bonger. What's going on, man? How are you? How are you? Thanks oh, for I'm having great. me, man. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to get myself a little brightness. You're looking good, by the way. I got to say. <laughs> what do you got? A softbox going? <laughs> I do. Yep. Softbox up above. Yep. Oh, man. It's so crisp. I need a little softbox action over here. You got the background lights going, dude. Yeah, you're looking clean. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it. So, Appreciate it. Yeah. At one point, I was going to do some like YouTube streaming and stuff, but it's all good. Um, all right, so we have a lot to hop into. Um, first off, I want to say that you have been on the Discord server participating in these weekly challenges for how long now? Um, it's probably been around a little over two years. I think my very first uh, real introduction on the Discord and stuff was Dynamic Machines. I wanted to try to participate in that one. Yeah, I think that was challenge three, I believe. This is challenge seven, which is insane. How, how many of these challenges have you done um, since then? Um, so I've done pretty much all of the big community challenges since then. And I don't remember what I was up to on the weeklies. I think something like 40 or something like that. Uh, the, the bot, unfortunately, has been down for a little while. But yeah, um, I'm on a pretty long streak. I just like to, those weekly challenges keep me fresh, just trying to come up with new ideas and different things to do. Um, and the prompts, you know, even if it's a prompt that I don't like, it's like, well, what can I do? How can I interpret this my way? And what can I use to make it? So 
Yeah, yeah, and I think it really pays off. So for the, for those of you guys who don't know, I'm sure most of you do, but on the Discord server, we host the weekly challenges. It's very similar to like Inktober if you're um, an illustrator where you get a prompt every day for the month of October. But in this case, on the Discord server, you get a prompt once a week, um, every week, basically, except when we're doing these big community challenges. And it's just a way to keep the challenges going, uh, keep pushing yourself. And Metatrox here has been doing them for about two years. He has one of the longest streaks on the server. Um, and like, you've been at it for a while. And I remember when you started, your art was, you know, it was good, but like it, yeah. you win them pretty regularly at this point. And it's really impressive to see you continue to do this. Like a lot of people would be like, eh, I'm going to move on. I'm not going to do the weeklies anymore. I'm just going to focus on the bigger stuff, but you come back every time. Like why, why do you keep coming back every week? Um, like I said, uh, primarily I would say it just, it's something that keeps me fresh, keeps me moving, you know, we all have life and other things that kind of distract us or other projects, but I think spending a day or two or, you know, at least a few hours on some of these a week, I think just uh, kind of helps ignite a little something in there. You know, for me personally, a lot of times when I'm working on a project, if it gets drug out really long, I kind of get bored with it. And yeah. I know that's probably hard to, <laughs> you know, not the right thing to say, but I, I just get bored with it. And it's like, okay, so every week I know I have at least one fresh new thing that more or less I'm going to practice my skills, learn something different. It's more of like a personal project or a passion project, which most of us like those, you know? So that's probably the main reason why I just kind of keep doing them. It's, it's fun. It's a lot yeah, of fun. man. Absolutely, and and I just gotta commend your um, uh, your persistence because you you've been doing these three D challenges for for a while the, the 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 big ones the three D community challenges the month long ones, and I'm just so happy for you that you that you won on this one, man. It's so cool. Your art. Let's talk about the art. This is unbelievable. Yes. It's so good. It's so so good. Thank you. Um, there's so much going on. I have so many questions um, about everything I'm seeing here, but let's pace ourselves and let's begin with the first question. How did you get this idea? Where did this come from? So initially, um, when you first released a video, um, I, you know, I started kind of trying to figure out what, what do I want to do? What type of style, what type of, type of theme? Yeah. Um, and so most, most people in the community probably know me. I, I use a lot of assets. And so a lot of times, um, instead of using necessarily like references or mid journey or something AI to kind of give me inspiration, um, sometimes a lot of the assets that I have or assets that I see kind of mm -hmm. give me a little bit of my inspiration. And so initially I wanted, I had two ideas. It was either go sci-fi or I kind of wanted to do maybe something along the lines of like, um, uh, Lord of the Rings, like a big giant orc and yeah. maybe have the hero battling yeah. some some smaller trolls or something or something like that or yeah. vice versa. Um, and then do something of that sort. But, you know, as I started to kind of look for assets and things of that sort, you know, there was stuff out there, but not quite what I felt would fit what I wanted to do down that route. Mm. Um, and I'm a big fan of sci-fi. I really like a lot of sci-fi stuff. I do a lot Same. of sci-fi work. And I knew I already had some assets that I think would work well, that I could incorporate well together. And cool. so that's kind of what gave me the first initial idea. Okay, got it. So you had like your tool set and your workbench was your inspiration in this case. Um, Correct. Yeah. You're like, here's, here's what I have to work with. Um, and here are the things that I can pull quickly. And you start making, mm -hmm. the, making something from what you already have. So where do you begin? Like, what's your process when you first start out? How do you start? playing with these assets that you have so um of course i use unreal engine so what's really nice about unreal is that you can just get the basically the full quality asset in there see what it's going to look like start to light things a little bit and you get a really good representation right away uh like you were talking with manuals like you kind of wanted that step of a little bit of payoff where like I, i'm yeah. doing all this technical stuff ahead of time that it takes so long to get that visual payoff. And I think that's one thing that's really nice about Unreal and especially using assets. It's like, 
I already know what this is basically going to look like. You know, I'm going to make texture changes and material changes and I'm going to relight stuff, but I can drop an asset in it and choose some animations and be like, wow, okay, this is already a thing within literally a few days. You know, I already had my basic boss animation and hero animation. Like I knew those were two things that I wanted right away was, um, I wanted the boss to be doing some sort of impact and I wasn't sure what that was um, right away, but I knew I wanted to use that slow motion as some sort of impact in the scene, whether it be explosion or something of that sort. And so um, uh, fortunately, the character the boss that I used was a, a free Paragon character that literally comes on the Unreal Marketplace and yeah. um, I, he has some pre-made animations, so I went in those, made some tweaks to how I wanted to like it, a little bit of the timing changes, because um, I, as you can see, I didn't want both um, chains to hit the floor exactly the same time, so I offset them a little bit so I could have two different explosions, you know, a, a very slight offset there. Um, and then once I get the, the characters in there and the general motion, um, now it comes down to how do I incorporate an environment around this and how do I include that environment into the action that's happening? Okay, okay. Do you have one of your early, like what's your earliest render? I do. Um, so my earliest render, which this is one of the, the pros and negatives of using Unreal. Since you get to see everything in real time, uh, you don't really do renders early on um, because you see it. <laughs> you don't have to render stuff out. Yes, yes. Um, so this would be probably one of my earliest renders unfortunately it already has got a lot going on um not a ton uh so like i said i got the boss and the hero animations and then i just started to move some objects in okay why is the hero going to be leaping uh, are they just leaping away from the explosion or what so i added a barrier there and started to add some simple props um you know a lot of the assets that i use um I use, there's tons of free stuff out there, mega scans. The whole ground is all yeah. mega scans and Quixel um, and a few other things in there all, you know, the, the main barrier, the sandbags, it's all just mega scans. You know, um, one tip that I always like to use is don't use the stock textures or at least modify them, color tint them, change them, do something so that it's not as noticeable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and then I just started to add, um, some buildings. Um, I had some kit bash 3d environment buildings that I recently picked up that had launched. And, you know, uh, one thing I always tell people, I, I know a lot of the, some of the assets I have are paid and expensive, but I don't just buy them just to buy them or buy them for a challenge. Like there's always sales, 50% off, 70% off. And I understand that not everybody is uh, able to buy assets or spend money, in, but there is a lot of free stuff out there. So anyways, I had recently picked up the Kit Bash 3D and I just started to kind of drop in some of those elements because I wanted to start getting an idea of the parallax that was actually happening. Um, Got it, okay. So uh, you, you had, yeah. you had the, the two characters, the boss, the hero, you had the animations figured out. Then you started to bring in some of the environment to justify why this person was dive rolling over something, right? Um, Correct. And you kind of had your foreground figured out a little bit. And at this point, you're like, okay, well, let's let's figure out what the background looks like, especially with the camera move to get a better sense of your overall scene. So you started pulling kit bash assets. Is that what we're looking at here? Are these these sci-fi buildings on the left and right? Correct. Yeah, the left and right. And a couple of the props are all part of like kit bash 3D, um, the mountains and stuff in the background. That's just mega scan stuff. Um, and then I had some other robotic or sci-fi characters that I had in my library. And so I just started to bring them in and try to color tone them and match them so that they all felt to be as a bit of a team. Yes. And I originally started with like yellow, which I kind of I liked it because it seemed to pop off the screen. Um, but eventually I wanted to change the colors because I knew I wanted to separate the hero or the good guys from the bad guys using color palette. Um, so I'll switch over here to this next, um, the next section here. So I started to, oh, well, actually in the initial render here, I also have um, my VDBs. So um, yeah, how, cause that's, was that's awesome. my biggest question is like, how, yeah. how are you getting that integrated? So this was the first time I really started with VDB stuff in Unreal. Um, 
I was using 5.2, which requires a plugin. And uh, it was so awesome that Ember Gin kind of gave that free month uh, during the challenge. It worked perfectly. It was a great way to get into it. Yeah. So I started with basic, yeah, I started with the presets and started to make some tweaks to what I knew, I, you know, the, to fine tune it the way I wanted it to be. Yeah. Um, and speaking of like the the slow motion aspect, um, I had a lot of people ask. What I ended up doing was taking the explosions and just simulating them at a larger scale so that it felt slower, even though it wasn't slower, because I wasn't actually slowing down the frame rate of the VDBs. I just simulated them at a bigger scale. Oh, and okay. so um, what you see here, this is two different elements. Um, it is the main explosion plus a dust explosion that goes out. Yeah, I knew I wanted that that pretty powerful impact. And I started to animate the the robots were gonna be getting smashed. I really wanted a good impact there. And I added uh, the fire that's on the ground after the explosion. That's like a Niagara simple particle system for really? fire. Nothing super fancy there. Um, all the animations outside of the boss are just Mixamo uh, animations that were tweaked and, and retargeted over, which as you mentioned, retargeting is lots of fun. Ah, <laughs> oh, but it's the worst, man. It's It really is the worst. So it, like the worst you're basically you have your like T pose characters, your robot, your hero, mm -hmm. um, and you grab essentially like the animated skeleton from Mixamo. You bring mm -hmm. that into Unreal and pairing them is just huh. yes how did you how you know, did you work past that like how did you just youtube yeah so actually like <laughs> yeah yeah so actually um unreal actually simplifies it a little bit because most characters for unreal especially if you buy them on the marketplace they're all with the same rig the epic skeleton rig um there is a couple of them they're like version four and version five but for the most part they're they're the same rig. So uh, Mixamo, there's actually a plugin for Unreal to convert Mixamo animations to Unreal uh, Epic Skeleton within just a couple clicks. It's actually what, what really nice. It Makes it a lot easier. Um, Do you remember? I'd have to look it up. I, I'll have to, I, I can I can drop a link or something, but it's, uh, I forget exactly what it's called, but if you search the marketplace, it's paid. I want to say it's probably about 30 bucks or so worth, in USD. Worth. Uh, worth it, yes. The hours that you spend trying to not break something is is incredible. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank um, you for that lead. So, thank you. Yep. This was my next step here. I started to fine tune the explosions a little bit. So I used a Niagara uh, particle system Ooh. to create like some pyro streaks and um, some rough like boulders that were coming off, and uh, just I added some a little bit of grass foliage to the ground. Nothing crazy. Oh, the uh, next look after so that. Good. Yeah, I, I knew I wanted more of that Michael Bay <laughs> kind of yeah. big explosion kind of effect. Um, this has a little bit of a blank area on this one. Uh, I added, I wanted to bring in some cloud VDBs so I could get some more depth and volumetrics. And at this point, this is when I decided I'm going to turn this into like more of an invasion because I didn't really know at first, uh, okay, they're battling this boss, but why is he there? What is happening? So I wanted to convey this invasion that these guys are coming, the bad guys are coming, and these are their ships in the background. So I tried to kind of color tone it with dark blacks and grays, and all the light emissive from them would be like an orange color. And you can also real see quick, I changed all the good guys to a blue. Yep. Can you trim the clip, by the way, or loop just yes. the video portion? Yep. It'll just be a little easier to, to, to see. There you go. Sweet. Okay. So you're trying to separate the bad guys from the good guys. From the good guys, yeah. Yeah. Um, because obviously the, the hero is a humanoid character in a sci-fi suit, and all the other ones are robots. So I wanted to make sure that the robots were getting separated from the boss, since he is definitely like more of a robot type character. Yeah. yeah. And I wanted to play with the cloud VDBs. This one, the color was off. Um, so after that, I ended up moving on to... Uh, this stage here, so here we go. yeah, uh, go overcast. yep, going along, yeah, going along the lines of like an invasion. I started to add these drop pods, uh, which were part of like Kipash 3D. I wanted to give them a little bit of static light, as if the, these pods were coming from the ship and kind of crash landing, so and these cool. guys were coming out of these pods. Yeah, 
Um, I don't know if I have it in this one. Yeah. So in the beginning of the shot, um, the main ship in the background, you can see I added some pods like shooting down from the ship. Um, change the clouds a little bit so that you could see a little more of the, the actual ships in the background and so forth. Where are you getting um, these ships? These are just assets that you have that you're obscuring correct. with BDB yeah. clouds. Correct. Yeah. So the ships are big, medium, small. Uh, oh, the yeah. company that makes them. And they make some incredible stuff. Um, same thing. Very, you know, they are expensive, a couple hundred bucks, but you can catch them on sale for half off, 70% off half the time. And, and the amount of time and hours that I would spend trying to make something like that, um, it outweighs what it costs. And I understand yeah. not everybody has the money for sure, but, um, no, but you're, you do, you're basically, like... <laughs> that's why we're doing these interviews and these chats is because yeah. everyone has their own workflow. And this is a very unique workflow that a lot of other people, um, love doing as well. They love the asset workflow, yeah. myself yeah. included. So like, um, I think what you're doing there is you're trading like uh, time for money essentially, or money. For Correct. Time. Correct. Um, and, and. I've actually explained it that way in the discord. Sometimes when we get people and they, they talk about, oh, that's so expensive. And it's like expensive is relative. It really depends on your money. Like obviously 50 bucks might be expensive for one person, but not for another person. And I just type, I try to break it down to them in the way of, okay, if I was to try to model that ship and the amount of detail that that ship has, and that's just one asset in the pack. I said, just that one ship. I asked that person, how long would it take you to make that? Like, be optimistic. And they might say, oh, I don't know, 50, 100 hours. And I said, okay, so let's say it's 100 hours. And I spent $100 on it. I said, is your time worth more than a dollar an hour? That's how I like to break it down. Is like, I know my time is worth more than a dollar an hour. I have a wife. I have kids. I want to be with them. I don't want to take that time doing that. Would I like to learn that skill set? You betcha. I, someday I will, you know, but yeah. I think for the type of artwork that I like to do and the role that I want to eventually have, you know, maybe get in the industry, I'd love to be an environment artist or a previous person. Um, I just like building these worlds, these scenes, these atmosphere. And like you said, getting bogged down with all the technical stuff along the way, that can really just hinder that and you, oh, you don't time. make as much. Big time, yeah. yeah, big time, big time. I think we're very similar. I love creating environments. It's my favorite, photoreal environments. Yeah. That's my favorite uh, thing I, to do when it comes to 3D. So um, it's really inspirational to, to see you put this piece together. So I gotta ask, like usually when I use Unreal, I'm using it as like a place to finish something. Mm -hmm. I I will bring in assets from that I maybe either created in C4D. <clears throat> like if I do have to create a custom piece of, of, of something, I'll create it in C4D and I'll bring it over into Unreal to then be used to, to in my final scene. Are you bringing in anything that you created custom outside of the Ember Gen assets? Are you bringing in anything um, from outside programs? Um, not really. So um, I actually try to do as much as I can in Unreal. Um, I know some of the tools are, are limited, but there is a there is a modeling suite inside of Unreal nowadays that you can use for pretty basic stuff. Yeah. Um, I use, um, you know, there's lots of little plugins and add-ons. And, you know, my, my goal for Epic is to eventually someday, I never have to leave Unreal whether yeah. that be the modeling or, you know, I can use it for physics. I can use it for simulations. I can use it, um, compositing and actually there. compositing. Yep. There's layers. There's, I mean, you can do all your color grading, there's sequencing, there's all of that stuff in unreal. And, uh, even in the newer recent release 5.3, uh, they added a bunch of skeletal mesh tools too. So now you can actually rig weight paint and everything right inside of unreal. So is it the best tools and the best workflow? Probably not. I don't really know because I don't do it. But, um, you know, for somebody like me who doesn't, who isn't locked into a different workflow, this is great for me because this opens up a whole opportunity uh, of doing different things. So I want to ask, like, we, your art looks so good at this point. Like, where are we at? Are we on, like, you know, week four final render here? What is this? <laughs> no. Um, so this point... It's probably beginning of week two. Um, Dude, what? Because, how, how, yeah. are you looking at, how are you looking at this and being like, it's not done? 
it needs a lot yeah more. like what <laughs> yeah so at this point you know i i had added my drop pods and stuff like that and i knew what i wanted to do was um i wanted to have a little more interaction with the environment from the explosions and stuff so um i, I ended up going into uh some physics so i added some props and i added this barrel here um so i opened up a second a second level inside of unreal and i put the barrel there gave it some collisions and i added basically a, what they call a bomb node inside and started to simulate and record the actual explosion so that way i could get some a little more interaction to i mean this is a big explosion and nothing else seems to be moving or interacting besides the characters okay um so that was my first attempt was doing a a, a barrel explosion here and then I wanted to add some more barrels and also interact with the barrier. So I, you can see one of the barrels on the right side is just all out of whack because physics, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the barrier I took in, uh, I used Unreal's um, fracture node and chaos, uh, uh, chaos system to Dude, break yeah, a piece off crazy. of the. I didn't even know that that yeah. was a thing. Yeah, and it's it's actually really simple, really easy. It uses the same type of bomb explosion, um, but you just fracture the element. And uh, finally, I fixed some of the barrels and stuff like that. And so this here was basically my final. And of course, I would take little breaks in between because uh, I, you know, I would listen to a lot of the community and people on Discord, and they'd be like, "Oh man, you should." have the barrel hit the barrier instead. That's what's breaking it. It's not the explosion, the barrel's hitting it. So I moved the barrel over. I corrected the other barrels and crates that I have exploding on the right side. Mm -hmm. And I was able to use those and kind of animate them. Uh, I used like a drag node, like a, a resistance node to be able to kind of slow those down to give it that slow motion effect, which was, yeah. it worked really well. Um, and so basically what you see now is the final version um, minus uh color grading so do you have oh beautiful beautiful what are you using to color grade um adobe premiere which yeah. is probably the worst thing to do but um whatever it, it was works. just it's what i have yeah and i would love to learn other software like davinci or something like that i know it's kind of a better workflow it's free but, too, uh yeah so i it easy. yep i just exported as um as a exr sequence put it in adobe premiere do the, did a little bit of Lumetri color on it, and and this is kind of what Classic. the final result ended up being. So, out of Unreal, like, do you have your Unreal scene open by chance? Like, I do. Can, uh, can we see yeah, me... what this looks like before you hit render? I'm assuming you're using the movie render queue with like some console variables to spice up stuff, anti-aliasing, correct? And whatnot. Yeah. Um, is this all Lumen? Um, um, no, so I actually I actually rendered out in path tracing. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, that a, looks better. yeah, a lot of my artwork I tend to do path tracing, which has some limitations. Um, it's yeah, still kind of early right? and new. Like um, you can't volumetrics do actually do work. They do work now. Um, you do you can get some layering issues um, with the volumetrics uh, in path tracing, but uh, the quality. I feel it's much better because you get closer towards a uh, traditional render yes. over Lumen. Lumen yes. is great um, and and it's kind of magic what it does, especially yeah. in real time, but it's also very cheaty. It, it tries to get a away with a lot of things that uh, traditional render like path tracing, it kind of brute forces it and says, no, nope, yeah. I'm going to make it look the best that I can. It gets um, you like 90% there. And when you switch to path tracing, you're like, oh, snap. This looks yep. This looks better yeah, when you. There's that ten percent. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. But yeah, I, so I would the, love um, to see the, your your scene if possible. Yeah, it's oh, it's opening up right now. I having I this the the scene got incredibly uh, large and heavy. <laughs> um, so if you guys have I will. questions for Metatrox, by the way, I see we have one. Hit me with at Punisher so I can see them. Um. So this. Just hit play is asking, are you working a full time job or when he's not working a nine to five? I'm just trying to gauge time investment here. No shade. I'm just truly amazed and jealous. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> what, what's your time investment on this stuff? So um, the time investment on this is is pretty it's not crazy. Like I said, a lot of it just because I use assets and it's unreal. 
things move a lot faster than you might expect. Um, up until about the challenge period, um, I was actually working a full-time job. I was a business owner. Um, and so that becomes more than a full-time job. Um, I recently, uh, a few months ago, actually sold my portion of the business in hopes of pursuing this more often. So Whoa. the sale of the business has given me the financial opportunity to be able to, okay, I'm, I wanna focus on this now. I've always wanted to do this. Um, a quick little backstory about myself, like I'm almost 40 years old. Um, I started doing graphics design stuff in the late nineties. Um, I remember using software called like Bryce 3D, Poser 3D back in the late nineties. Um, and I have, 3D work from, you know, there to about the early 2000s. And I took a long break in between. I was still doing just 2D graphics design for, you know, brochures and flyers for just general people and stuff and businesses. And then a couple of years, uh, about four or five years ago, I started to touch on 3D again. I got into some software called Adobe Dimension. Um, and which is incredibly simple. It's like a V-Ray renderer, but no modeling, no nothing. It's basically, it's meant for like uh, product renders. And so I got into there and I started to use it to make these scenes for uh, the game PUBG. And oh, so I was yeah? working that the game game's model. So yeah. good, dude. That game, that yeah. was like a chunk of my life. <laughs> that was, was the PUBG. stuff. Yeah, I was Woo. playing it like crazy and yeah. I started ripping the game models and making fan cool. art. And it was cool because the fan art actually led into working with them um, on no some stuff, which was really cool. I had I had some officially licensed merch. I had done some uh, artwork for them and stuff. Um, some of my stuff even actually was in the game, uh, the mobile version of the game for a while. So it was pretty I just cool. Say, and, and this is a great example of someone, uh, which can happen for all of us, following their passion and just doing what they love for fun and how it will turn into opportunities. So like you kind of create your own future in that sense. Um, Correct. That's incredible. I love that. Yeah. And I was just having fun, making fan art and it, it led down that path. Um, so this here is the Unreal uh, scene. Um, I'm not going to play it because it, it chugs like crazy, <laughs> but uh, you can see these are just, you know, these are the kit bash elements that I just kind of put in the scene just to kind of fill stuff out. Um, it's always important to me that I put stuff behind the camera yes. um, for reflections and proper lighting and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that usually, People are always like, you're not even going to see it. Why do you put that there? Well, I'm not going to get crazy detailed. Um, and of course, with uh, Unreal and like Nanite and stuff, you can you can add a lot to your scene. So I, I fully built out the scene as, as well as I could because I wanted up close crazy detail like this in the rocks, so but I good. also wanted to see an entire environment. Ooh. And so those ships and everything off, the VDBs back there, it's all like real geometry, real, um, you know, volumetric clouds and stuff like that. And there's there's plenty of stuff that you don't even see. You don't see these buildings that I placed way back. These were kind of early on and I just never really got rid of them. <laughs> so wait, 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 go, go, go back up top down view. Where did you get that like topology, that road? Is that, uh, is that like a Google Maps thing that you brought in? Um, like this is actually uh, Quixel Megascans. They have what they call what? a large tundra. They oh, have yeah, that? Gig yep, gigantic sandstone terrain. Uh, so it's meant for views like this, because if you get down in here, it's it's not super good. You know what I mean? You wouldn't want to walk or drive on it or something. Wait, but was this like for the distant green views, one? Is this originally like green with like water uh, on it? This one's kind of sandy, like a dusty. It's no part way. of their sand, uh, Dude. yeah, sandstone terrain. Yep. Sleeper, freaking sleeper assets. <laughs> That's so right. Good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that was this was kind of the full scene. Um, there's a lot of characters in the background that I kind of added in. I wanted to add gunfire. I wanted to add all sorts of interaction. You know, another pod coming in with another boss coming into the scene. You know, you. Unfortunately, you don't really see a lot of that stuff. And I know sometimes you shouldn't spend time on things that you're not really going to see. But you had but, the time, um, dude. You had the time. Yeah, <laughs> I had the time, unfortunately. Um, I I want to hit the chat here and, and they got some mm -hmm. questions for you. So I'm going to shotgun a couple questions at you. If you that's bet. cool. Absolutely. Um. Okay, let's see. 
the model of the boss changed a bit somewhere in the middle of your render. Is that like a variation that it came with or did you add it, to, add it yourself? How'd that go down? Um, I did that myself. So let me actually close down the real one here. And I have uh, this here that I put together. This is a little Ooh, breakdown of how I kit bashed on. on top of it. Um, so I knew since it was a free asset, anybody could use it, right? And um, I wanted to make sure that my boss at least had some sort of separation from anybody else that might come in and use the asset for their boss submission. So I started with the main, uh, his name's Richter from Paragon. So I added him in and I knew I wanted to use some elements. So I have like a couple kit bash kits of just simple geometry that I added some metal texture to, um, added some stuff to his arms. I, he had these gears on him already and some of the animations that come with him actually move the gears. And I was like, I really like that idea, but I want to take it up a level. So I added some more like better detailed gears to it. And I used the Niagara particle system to basically add some sparks as if it's like, it's got this motion, uh, you know, pretty heavily inspired by like transformers and stuff like that. I wanted a little more uh, Decepticon kind of feel, I guess you would say. Um, I really like the lights and stuff that he already had. So I, I wanted to take it to the next level and add some detail. Um, I ended up getting rid of the face. Um, I wasn't super big on the skin uh, material on him and the face. It, it's cool, but I wanted to make it different. So yeah. by adding some body armor to him, it covered up some of the skin. And then I uh, found a couple free models of like a skull and a, um, a skull looking metal helmet. And so I took that and I booleaned it out myself and slapped the, the skull inside of it. And that was what eventually came became in his head which i feel like looked a little more menacing than oh, the totally. guy terrifying yeah it's yeah. so good um yeah. i'm gonna throw a couple more at you let's see if we can yep. shotgun these um let's see what part of 3d do you struggle with the most and want to improve on um i would say for me like i I definitely want to learn more of the the technical side of doing stuff so that when there's a point that I can't find an asset or or you know find something I can make it. I see. Um, because ultimately that's the real freedom is that like you mentioned earlier with manual like it's kind of this freedom to be able to make anything you want. Yeah. But working in an asset pipeline like I do you don't always have that freedom you're kind of restricted to what you can find or what you can afford yeah. um and so that does make a difference for sure i would like to i'd like to know a little more modeling and uh definitely um texturing um and materials um i'm super excited uh thank you for <laughs> obviously getting me into fourth place that that did give me the opportunity to get a an ember gen license and i'm really excited to jump more into there and start doing some simulations and stuff Heck yeah, man. Thank you so much for taking the time with us. Uh, we're all blown away by your art and uh, you're truly Appreciate an inspiration, it. man. I, I keep going with the weekly challenges. I know you just submitted uh, recently, so can't mm -hmm. wait to see it. Um, next week is going to be a fun one too. That I was telling you about earlier. So yes. that'll be fun as well. Very exciting. Um, but Steven, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm glad that we were able thank to like you. make a nice connection here. I can't wait to keep chatting and keep each other posted on stuff, man. So, um, yeah, thank you for sure. So, uh, last thing before we bounce, anything you want to say to, uh, to the artists out there watching? Um, just, I would say, get into the discord, like join it up, get some ideas. Um, just even if you don't say anything, you don't talk, just hop in, get inspiration from people. There's always people in there streaming and doing stuff, lots of different types of artwork. Um, don't become annoying, but, uh, you know, yeah. like get in, ask questions and stuff like that. Um, and, and do the weekly challenges. It's a great way to, to keep fresh and try something, learn something new. Even if you're not winning, like obviously everybody wants to win or get up there, but even if you're not winning, just, just keep at it. It's, it, it's well worth it. I'm, I'm kind of late to the late to the game, but you can still do it. hundred percent, man. hundred percent. Thank you so much. Metatrox. Thanks. I'll see you on the server. And until then, Appreciate I'll, ca I'll catch you soon, man. Take it easy. Peace. Yeah. Peace out. Man, so good. So good. Thank you guys for, for uh, catching that one. Uh, 
like I said, you know, each artist has their own unique workflow and I love seeing it happen before our very eyes. It's the best. This is like, I, I freaking love these streams. We can keep it going and we're keeping it going because that was only the third artist we're talking to. We got two more. Our next one um, is Mr. Koala from China and uh, Koala could not join us today. Um, and he too put out an incredible breakdown. It's wacky, it's wild, it's super funny, it is all over the place. Um, so without further ado guys, let's get into our second place breakdown from Mr. Koala. Let's do it. Hey guys, this is Koala. I live in Chengdu of China. I'd like to make some stuff in Blender and you can follow me on Twitter. Today, I'll show my process about my work in the boss fight challenge. Okay, let's do it. This is my first time participating in this global challenge. Winning second place is also a huge encouragement to me. I once participated in the Chinese community challenge and I won the championship. You can take a look. But I want to try to compete with 3D artists from all over the world in a game. This may make me grow and the process will be interesting. This month I am challenging you. So, I'm a casual person. If I encounter a difficulty that I can't overcome, I will go around it. But there is only one difficulty that I can't overcome that it's the time. How can I make a shot that the audience can perceive in a limited time? I don't know what the judge is like, but I know what I'm good at and what I'm not good at. So just be myself. My final idea came from the movies of Stephen Chow, who's my favorite actor. I had searching for some interesting ideas from his movies in my mind. That's it. Then I chose a rendering style based on a cartoon I really like, Tetcon King Cree. I chose a boy I made. His shape is very simple, but he's cool and expressive. Next, I just need a simple plot device to make the characters relate to each other. As of now, I have no idea what my boss looks like. Maybe it's not that important. The boss attacks the boy. The boy needs to save one of them. He makes a choice and then he makes another choice. What an amazing idea. I drew the storyboard in the shot file using the Blender Grease Pencil tools. I made the most basic pose without any transition between keyframes. This makes the animation very clear. Next. I added some transition animations. Be careful. Don't let the transition animation blur your key pose. I did the stick effects and cloth simulation. It's all fake. I don't know how to simulate the stick effects, but I know what the effect I need looks like. So I used modifiers in Blender to create it. Displacement modifier is forever a god. I made the other two characters relatively simply because I knew their proportion in the video would be very small and they wouldn't take up a few pixels. Something's wrong. There's still a boss left here. Why should I participate in this competition? This is too tiring. So I chose the previous koala robot. He once helped me win a championship in the Chinese community. He might bring me good luck in the past. When I was doing it, I quickly sculpted its shape in its brush again and again, again and again. It is very quickly and intuitively. But the final model, I did it by hand, which was too tiring. From that moment on, I knew I didn't like hard surface modeling at all. No matter what, I finally have a ball. The texture style does not match either. I had to repaint the texture in 3D coat. I wanted a rough hand painted look just by hand. Finally, all the actors in the place. Attention actors. Everyone goes to perform with the boy. He is the main. Then I added some shaking and deformation details, which made my animation very exaggerated. I like exaggerated things. This is the charm of animation. Just use Blender's shape key function. Character animation is complete. I can focus on building and lighting. I use lots of box to lay out the composition of the scene. I think the modeling and details of the scene 
are not that important. I set the main light to backlight. It determines everything. The light in the far place and the darkness nearby. Everything is for the silhouette of the character to be clear. Some fill lights are only a slight modification. Finally, it's the painful moment. How do I create the fire and smoke effect? I can choose to use displacement to fake it or use real life video footage, but none of them met my expectations. But I suddenly thought of a way I can use DaVinci to convert realistic videos into stylized. I'm such a genius. I will extract some characteristics of hand-drawn effects from 2D animations, flattening, sharpening edges, reducing details, and extracting frames. Then I use DaVinci filters to express the corresponding characteristics. The effect is actually pretty good. I imported them into Blender to match the timing of the animation and regraded the colors. I discovered the magical effect of shockwaves by accident. Thanks, motion blur. Next, I need to make the buildings and props. I know their role in the scene, just as background fill. I guess I don't have the energy to create very detailed scenes. So let's turn on the magic, the mid journey. Singapore Porn can do in the style of Taiwan Country, the sauce of the two, two, one, one, that's 250. I generated some front-facing images of buildings and props, and I put them together into a 4K texture, which is what I often do to save computer resources. Next, I used a lot of boxes to piece together the shape of the building and projected the front and side of UVs. Artificial intelligence technology hates the job of UVs just like human beings. I also redrawn some textures and added some Chinese characters, which may impress my compatriots more. I basically got all the assets I wanted. I added the animation of the scene and props directly to the model. These animations are very subtle, but with the character animation as a reference, they don't require too much consideration. I only need to pay attention to the key triggering time and some shaking. I rigged some spotlights on the koala robot. The composition is a point worth noting. I have to keep the shape of the character clear at all times. The perspective of the buildings is all fake. The buildings in the distance are directly shrunk and hidden in the fog. I can't let the key points I want to express be overwhelmed by the details of the scene. I made the ground and buildings nearby as dark as possible. They were just a stage shape that supported the actor's performance. Finally, I rendered it only RGB, no depth compositing. I used DaVinci to adjust the color and glow. The koala robot is old, and the other work took me a week. I feel like I'm going to stop working, even if it's not perfect, because I'm so tired. I feel that I am limited by my creative state, and I cannot feel the aesthetic when I am too tired. My passion has also been exhausted, so I submitted. When I recall the process of this matter, I don't seem to have a very clear plan but I will just start doing it. If there are technical obstacles, I will change the method, but I think I still achieved my goal to conquer more people just in five seconds. Some artists are interested in this challenge, but may not have enough time. In my opinion, my koala robot has done a great job, but it was never prepared for this challenge. I never stopped creating short animations. If I had an idea in my head, I would do it right away without any purpose. These exercises improve my skills and experience, and the challenge is just an opportunity. It will check your accumulated results in one month. I am just like you. I have many shortcomings, and I envy many artists who have better technical and artistic abilities than me. They inspire me, but I think I also have characteristics that other artists don't have. I am impatient, but I am strong in action. I am not strict, but I am humorous. I am not persistent, but I am adaptable. I am not good at speaking English, but I'm good at Chinese. You can also find your own strengths. Our work is a composite reflection of ourselves. That's all. Thanks, Clint, for your efforts. Thank you to everyone who's watching.
And thank you to all the artists who have been creating. That's it. All voices are AI generated because I'm not good at speaking English. Goodbye. Dude, that was, that was like the most off the rails breakdown that I had ever seen. Yeah, it was like, it, it was, it was just like hopped up on energy drinks and off the wall. Um, I love it. I think part of it was because of like the, the dude's sense of humor and also the AI generated like voice that he had and his art going throughout was just so wacky. I, what a unique style. I'm I'm so inspired by by that. I freaking love it. Also, huge Stephen Chow fan. He is probably one of my favorite directors. No, he is one of my favorite directors of all time. I love his movies so much. It inspires my sense of humor, my comedy, my directing style, all that. Like Stephen Chow, number one. Um, and Tech on King Cree is also an incredible anime as well. I got the art book down here, all the drawings by it. It's just ah, super inspirational. So. Thank you, Koala. Sad that you weren't able to join us this time around, but man, thank you for that breakdown. That was a treat. That was very special, guys. So we um, we got one more artist to hop into, Mr. Fabricio, the first place winner, the two-time first place uh, champion. Um, before we hop into that, one uh, little announcement for you guys. So next week, I have a video coming out. It is a photo scanning related video. And uh, we're gonna, we're basically, we're gonna be doing a scavenger hunt together, all right? So that comes out next Saturday, October 7th, and that's gonna tie directly into the Discord weekly challenge. So if you guys aren't a part of the Discord server, go down below, click that link, hop on in, it's really fun, and we're gonna do a scavenger hunt together next week, all right? It's gonna be a week long thing. It's gonna be super fun, uh, you'll learn a ton, it's gonna be great. All right, but I think now is the time to meet Mr. Fabricio. Let's do it. Let's hop in. Oh. Hey, Fabricio, what's up, dude? Hey, what's up, man? How are you? Oh, do you have a? Do you have the cachaça? Yeah, I am here with me, okay, ready here, me for action. <laughs> what you what you brought me at camp here so i'm gonna i'm gonna open up one of these things so what what is cachaça tell us what is cachaça you're from rio yeah 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 uh cachaça is a very traditional drink here uh actually it is not not a pure cachaça it is a liquor made with cachaça uh who knows the city parati from rio, uh, in the border of rio de janeiro sao paulo know what i'm talking about there is a festival over there there was i brought my my pack of little cachaça drinks also presented with a few and also uh, a, a few friends in the camp as well uh, who helped me a lot over there and, yeah uh, let's yeah, uh they... <laughs> let's enjoy let's enjoy this drink cheers yeah okay. cheers man um and let's pull up some images from camp so for the for those of you who don't know fabricio won the Endless, Engin Endless Engines Challenge, and as part of that challenge, um, he got a ticket to Camp Mograph. So, Soto, if you want to switch over um, to these images here, we got some pictures together. We had a good old time. We are chilling. <laughs> um, so that's uh, Fabricio on the left, of course, and uh, Sam, the fifth place winner um, of Endless Engines on the right, and we're just hanging out, having a good time. I got their stickers in each one of my that hands. That's amazing. Um, we went on a hike together. It was the most wholesome time, y'all. Um, freaking the best. The absolute best. This is us at Bingo Night. Um, that's David <laughs> uh, Mello Mograph on the right. He won, I believe, fourth place in Endless Engines. So this is fifth, fourth, and first place Endless Engines in the flesh together at Camp Mograph. Just the best time. The freaking best time. We got a little Polaroid and everything. Just good vibes all around there's billy so billy in the middle he was the first render of the top 100 like the car on the city street at night this is all of us just chilling having a good old wholesome time guys it doesn't get more wholesome than that so uh yeah yeah that's agree we, we can switch back now soto but uh yeah very good times ah so good 
so so good yeah fabricio i'm i'm really amped to uh to be here with you to be chilling congrats on first place again uh oh, how does man, it feel to so be a two-time a two-time champ <laughs> that's crazy man it is crazy uh i can't be thankful enough and i thank you so much i'm so so, so thankful it is so humbling yeah it is amazing uh you guys choosing me again uh, for first place it is mind-blowing uh, i i don't i don't know what else to say it is just mind-blowing <laughs> Yeah, really? man, and like, I didn't tell, I didn't tell the judge that you had won before. Um, so we try and go no biases, of course. And mm -hmm. you know, it was both of our wins, both of our first first places. And Raf Crescetti, also from Brazil, didn't know you were from Brazil either. And he was like, "Well, I had nothing to do with this, guys. Look, this is unbiased, complete unbiased." Um, I thought that was funny, but um, yeah, man, your art is incredible. Um, it was so great to meet you at camp. Let's let's get into the art, man. Like I did yeah, not sure. know that this was Unreal Engine. First off, is the most uh -huh. insane thing. Um, we'll get to it. We'll get to that. How did you sure. come up with this idea? What what's going through your brain to to pull off this kind of thing? Well, uh, first of all, uh, I wasn't sure if I would join in this challenge or not. Uh, I just finished one project uh, in my, my uh, daily work and yeah, I, I have a, a, a gap on production. So yeah, well, why not? And I, I have this character I started producing as a personal project based on a friend's concept art uh, years ago, about 10, 10 or so years ago. I started modeling it. Uh, I will show here. Um, yeah, I started modeling this guy, this guy, this the, the concept, the original concept art. Uh, but at the time, I didn't have, I, I didn't think I have the skill to finish. So I wasn't satisfied with the results and I just dropped the project. When you make the announcement of boss fight, I, the first thing that came to my mind was this guy. So, oh man, this is the chance. I have to, I have to scatter Resurrect. my yeah. storage. Yeah, I, I have to back, uh, finding my backup uh, old HD or somewhere. And let's keep doing this. And this my, my was my starting point. And uh, I was also at the time playing a lot of, of Final Fantasy 16, which has amazing boss battle sequences. One of the most epic, that epic sequence I have seen in a video game in recent days. And I kind of started to connect the dots. Wow, man, I have this guy. It is a, a it is will be, will be a good head start. Yeah. And yeah, I want to do something yet. I don't, I'm not sure if I'm gonna, gonna make it, but yeah, I'll try. That's my try. So, so it, it started from there. I want to say that um, this kind of ties into everything we've been talking about, especially with Metatrox, about him doing the weekly challenges um, every single week. And he's just honing his craft more and more and more all the time, right? Um, in yeah. this case, what you did is you had your 10, your past self, help out your future self because you were yeah, because you persisted in your 3d hobby and passion and now career you do this as a job yeah right so yeah yeah i'm full, full time for the others so it, it like the things you do in the past help you in the future and i just love to see that definitely like, yeah that that ring true here um so yeah what do you do like how how'd you how'd you uh mine this this amazing model and bring it to a v2 how do you finish it out where, where do you go from here uh well uh first of all i gather my previous model yeah. and was really messy at the time uh, like like i said oh, it was a, a more than a 10 years gap uh i continue to develop my skills in modeling uh, and also, uh, just before I jump into ZBrush, I would like to show off also this guy here. My my pass, my my pa uh, Fabrizio the pass also helped me with this one. Uh, this is another <laughs> amazing concept. I, I made a, a work on top of it uh, many years ago as well. So this was my hero, and uh, yeah, I keep kept uh, connecting the dots to make this animation for boss fight. Uh, so um, after having my base mesh ready yeah uh i 
I, I adjusted the UVs and jumped to the brush and started making uh, nice uh, from the top of my head. I started sculpting other details as well and kept improving the model. Uh, not all pieces because it is too time consuming, but uh, I mm. think uh, when, I, when I took, actually the first step I took when I, I, I picked the, the original model, I jumped to Blender to make the block out. So I, I can show you this uh, in the in the second, but uh, yeah, it was basically it. Uh, I just kept working in details. This one was already uh, UV ready, so I didn't have to make jump and forth. Uh, mm -hmm. It is not so recommended because sometimes you can deform the UVs a little bit, but I wasn't too concerned with that, so that I'm fine. Uh, and just so you can see before, uh, when I uh, since I, I didn't rely too much in the brush, I make things in hand by by hand modeling at each oh, wow. is it, it is so time consuming and now i prefer to scope uh from a very base mesh uh -huh. and it's way faster yeah it is way faster and Go to depending on yeah, sure. yeah this is one example that uh i detail on top of very low mesh wow. and uh well depending on what you're doing you can uh optimize this mesh and make a retopology and bake the, the details on top of it but uh since i uh, since at the beginning i was aware that i was using unreal and using the advantage of nanite meshes i just optimized the mesh and, and send it directly to unreal mm -hmm. so i didn't have to re retopology anything bake anything i just the way it is here i sent to unreal and it just works it's awesome <laughs> So you did all the detail here. Um, you took your past model, brought it into ZBrush, detailed yeah. it out, and you just focused on the torso. And um, because doing the legs was not necessary, uh, was that a decision Definitely. that you made later? Like you originally wanted to have the full body, um, but realized it would take too much time. So you said, let's adjust the idea. Let's have it be the torso. Yeah, uh, actually it was exactly the first option. I never wanted to make the full body character because yeah. in the past when i was doing it, it took so long uh i don't know maybe one month or more to make to get that result that i wasn't happy with it so yeah uh, that definitely was a no-no for me so uh i i made this blocking in blender so right in the beginning uh, i was it, it was very clear in my mind of what i wanted to achieve but uh I always start to, to to work with the least elements possible. So, yeah, torso. Uh, I also play a little bit with the scale of the character. I think in the beginning it was too big and was covering all the background. And yeah, I, I have to find this balance, find tune this balance. Mm -hmm. But uh, basically, it was the torso of the character. Right here, I have to improvise a, a, a arm because the arm I I read it from scratch. I didn't have, have actually this was made in the second day of the challenge. So, you had this on but, day two. You had your direction on yeah, day two of the challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I kind of have to. I I went with the first idea that came to my mind because the first thing I, I I thought was this character. So yeah, I have to do something with this guy. I don't know exactly what it would be. Uh, so uh, first of all, I thought in making him hitting the wall, and the the hero jumping. To save his life mm -hmm. that's what that's what it but then well the, it is a boss fight right uh i have to make something else uh maybe if it she counters the attack somehow and then i thought about this this spear this little spear here but uh since i wanted to emphasize the slow motion i just left it hanging there doing nothing and then i showed this to my wife and uh well what do you think and she said oh, it is boring Oh, really? Oh, it's boring. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, and and she. Why, why don't the spear hit him? Yeah, because he's too far away. Actually, I'm using the uh, mid distance uh, template. Yeah, uh, middle distance template. Yeah. So he's really far away. So the spear had to go way f really fast to, to hit him. And uh, in three or four seconds, the, I don't know how how to achieve this. Well, uh, I I really like the idea, so I will try to solve this and when i jump to unreal I, I will show how, to, how i tackle this issue sure sure actually it was a it was a huge issue I, I think the most difficult part of the whole project was 
to get this uh, spear throw uh, get right. It was the most like the motion of it, or finding a way to connect the hero and the boss. Ever everything related to the spear throw, the animation, the, the connection, everything was uh, the, the biggest challenge in this whole animation. But it was wow. very nice to to try to find and, and try to solve this. I, I it was my a challenge between the challenge, right? And uh, sure. yeah, I really liked it to surpass the difficulties. So uh, once you have your block out on day two, yeah. which is incredible. Um, a lot of artists, it takes a lot of time. I know Edge is uh, another very talented artist on the server. He takes like a week to find out his idea. Um, you yeah. know, so di again, different artists, different workflows, right? So you have this sure, on day sure. two. Where do you go from here? Yeah, uh, well, I started, I kept fine tuning a little bit in Blender uh, to have the, the feeling. Uh, actually, I, first of all, I was just trying to block it out. I, I wasn't uh, making any lighting in Blender because I, I, I was, since the beginning, I was planning using Unreal. But yeah, why not? Since I'm in Blender, Blender is so fast as well. Uh, I, so I tried to test the light and it gives me even a better idea of what, what I want to achieve. So this is the second work in progress. This was in Unreal already. And uh, I started animating a very rough animation of this character because I I, I, I did I did this. I took the base mesh, the whole base mesh, sent to Mixamo, make it a very simple bones. I can show it here. For the hero? Yeah, uh, actually for both. I, I, okay. I use the same technique for both. I sent to Mixamo, made the bones, and uh, I would love to remember the name of the artist, but this artist, he make it available in ArtStation, a free control rig for Unreal, using mix some of bones so it was just one click oh. and you have your control control rigs and you can animate it inside unreal and also complementing what metatrox said said before unreal skip the keep, keeps developing tools so you don't need to go back and forth between softwares and animation is one of them uh i, I was blown away how easy it was animating inside unreal i, yeah, I, will never I have think, a lot of questions uh, on, yeah, on that side yeah. of things and if you have that Plugin. If you can remember that plugin, maybe later. Yeah, I've seen the us. link. Yeah. Yeah, I'll put it in the description of this video along with Metatrox's, um, uh, uh, what is it? Um, retargeting situation. He had that as well. So I'll, I'll try and get both yeah, those links for awesome. you guys in the description. But okay, yeah. so you figured out, I guess animation was your next thing, yeah? Is trying to lock that in for both the hero and the boss. Try to get a sense of this, the, the motion of this, yeah? Yeah, definitely. So I, I have the rig, uh, the, the, the rig uh, ready, so I can tweak the animation and I went back and forth. Of course, here was a, a very ba the base model that wasn't detailed yet. I, I want to make sure if the animation will work before I jump into the details of the, mm. the character, of both of them. Actually, the hero, I didn't do too much in details because uh, this model was ready already. But it was also the only the tour, so I have to build the legs as well. But I just uh, reuse arm uh, the arm pieces to make the the leg work. So uh, wasn't wasn't a challenge at all. Uh, yeah. So the, the most challenging thing was to make the the boss to work. Um, I did some motion captures using my brand new Rokoku suit that I want. Oh, amazing! The previous <laughs> challenge. Yeah, I I kept connecting the dots. So why, why not? I had this. Amazing hardware here. Uh, it was at my side. Oh, I can I can show in the video because I'm crap. I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, I, I saw the chance of using this tool and wh why not? And uh, I have it right here. Me trying to make the animation of the the boss. And oh man, that's, that's you're cutting it close there. That's yeah. And this is my wife and uh, oh, amazing my dog helping. <laughs> uh yeah and we she kept jumping a lot and it was great for reference and of course i took one motion one of the motions and was pretty close what what I was in my was i had in mind before and yeah i kept it from that uh, she's this is the motion capture i already started to working a little bit on top of, of the motion capture because 
it is impossible to predict the, the arc, the, the position they will have to be on camera. Yeah. So I have to do a lot of tweakings on top of the motion capture. So you but, took uh, the Rococo motion capture file, that skeleton, you yeah. paired it with this hero character, and then you adjusted the mocap detail in Unreal with this control rig. Yeah. Yeah. Dang, yeah. that's a uh, solid workflow. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, definitely. It, it is great because uh, if I do this last year, I will probably go to Blender or 3ds Max and do all this motion capture uh, cleanup in the program and export it with Alembic files or something like that. And it is a little more time consuming. Um, I I did this for the simulation here or this uh, wall breaking here. I simulated in 3ds Max and exported to Unreal uh, using Alembic. Uh, but uh, it is geometric. Geometry cache is a little slow. Uh, mm -hmm. I, when I jump to Unreal, you see. Um, I, I could I could have done this in Unreal, but I never worked before with simulation. I was just looking at the MetaTrax workflow. I thought, oh, that, that would be so helpful if I do this in Unreal, but I, I don't have the experience. I wasn't sure if I should do it or not, so I prefer to go. I, I'm taking too much risks already, so I want to do something that I already know how to use it yeah so it has to be manageable to, yeah. you know because it, it's yeah, a project is yeah. just challenge and learning new stuff the whole way through like you have to work to your strengths but also keep in mind that you know let's yeah, try and definitely. Something new at the same time um so it's probably yeah, smart definitely. that you did that in 3ds um so yeah. once you have this like what's what's your next step you know I, i'm loving this process so far yeah yeah uh well i i kept building the environment uh and i went back and forth building the environment, building the uh, details of the character, uh, uh, setting up the lighting. Uh, I can move a little further here. I have a, a, a more mm. developed environment as well. And for the environment, I use basically the kit bash, this, this back here, the medi medieval siege. Yes. Yeah, but, but it was, yeah, the environment was basically it. So it is amazing pack. Uh, I didn't use uh, any mega scan here, but yeah, it was worked so well. And yeah, let's just keep <laughs> keep doing this. Well, I, and, I think um, your your lighting, real quick, I just say your lighting is incredible. Sure. Like, how long did it take to work in this lighting? Um, also, you have these particles in this fire. Are you using VDBs for that, or is that cards? Yeah. Well, I've jumped to Unreal. Uh, since, like I said before, the geometry cache is pretty slow with this. Uh, destruction here I will turn this off and now yeah it is real time again wow and yeah for the lighting in, in here there is a oh. lot of shitting here a lot of this light over there I faked a lot of stuff uh, but uh, I, I can break down the light in four steps it was uh, the environment uh, the, the environment uh, All right, what is this ultra uh, dynamic sky here? Yeah, giving yeah. You your moonlight. Yeah. The, for those of you guys who sky. don't know, ultra dynamic sky is probably my favorite plugin for Unreal um, for lighting your environment. It allows you to control the sun, the moon, even stars um, down to like the fog. It makes everything so easy. The fog, all that stuff. Um, it's like. 40 bucks, but it is so worth it. Um, it's my number one plugin. I would, I would use that. So, all right, you got ultra dynamic sky going with the stars, the moon, the clouds, good stuff. Um, what, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I started working for the fire. Dude, and, that's uh, it right there. Yeah. And, uh, a lot of volumetric lights, uh, like here's the main, the main one. And, Man, it, it is so amazing working in Unreal because you can see everything is working at, at the same time you are still developing the scene. Even if you have a, a very small stuff, very simple, very basic, it's already working. We, we can see the, uh, the shadows projecting through the, the smoke and stuff like that that you could only see after rendering, pumping, etc. It is a long time that you are skipping just using this tool. It is amazing. Yeah. And uh, I can't stress this enough. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I make the base lighting here for the fire. This is the main light. This is the, the biggest block of flight. Mm -hmm. And I start 
uh, adding more, like in the back, for example, has a, a small spot that can make it like a, a ring light around the in some places here. Because since the beginning, I'm very aware of the clarity of the information here, the comp yes. the composition. That's why I, I always start simple and start building a uh, building up on, on, on top of it because if you start to putting too much stuff in the very beginning and kind of lose the controls of the, what is really important so i have this hierarchy of attention in my mind so the first thing that should be seen is the boss so the main light will hit the boss the boss has to be the first thing uh, actually i'm sorry i go back again a little bit the the boss is the first thing I want the audience the audience to look at, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I have this in mind. So I, I keep focusing the light all to the boss and whatever with the environment and stuff like that secondary. So I work on that later. Uh, so having the fire set up, I started working with the moonlight. So give this mood and um, make some contrast between the boss and the rest of the scene. Uh, so because good. the boss is the only thing that is uh, orange and warm, like evil, red, stuff like that. Uh, so the moon, the moonlight, this I started placing this very nice colometric spotlight here, and to balance the fire illumination. And, and also, it is so it is so fun to work with lighting in Unreal because. Uh, you start having ideas in the middle of the process. Like, for example, uh, making the light helps tell the story. Uh, in the beginning, the boss is all red, or it is hit by the, the light of the fire. And when he is hit, he gets the hit. When he has moved back, he, the, the, the face is, is facing the moonlight, so it's not red anymore. It changed light, like he was defeated. So he, Pulls down the light on the on the face. Uh, this is one thing that I when, when I saw wow this is, I think this will, will work and I started de developing on top of this uh, put the position the head so it can face more of the light of the moon as well uh, to think the, uh, for this to work a little more uh, noticeable. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, I did extra lights as well to help with highlight stuff, uh, highlight a little details because the hero was just a silhouette. I just want to push a little bit of the details as well. Yes. There's also these guys here that's running for their lives. And uh, I, I really didn't want them to be, it, it's more like an Easter egg. It doesn't need to be noticeable, but I just wanted to add a little detail over there. So sure. I placed a few lights just to highlight a little bit uh, each of them. It's so well and, done. Uh, yeah, the lighting is just looks yeah. so, so good. Um, yeah. So you're basically just oh. trying to um, yeah. reveal their silhouette and their shapes uh, as clearly yeah. as possible. Um, yeah. Like those little detail lights that you did in the final step helps with all that stuff. Um, it's, yeah. it's genius. It's, it's so yeah. well executed. My God. Thank you. <laughs> also, got a shout out. Winbush, I see you in here. Mello, I see you in here as well. Oh, Shout out to Wimbush guys. is here. Man, yeah. Wimbush, thank you. I, I can, yeah, now I have the chance to think, think in life because I thank you so much for the tutorials, man. It helped me so much with this project. That's what's up, man. It helps us all. He helps us all for sure. Yeah, yeah, oh. definitely. Uh, speaking of lighting, uh, one other thing that I would like to highlight because uh, uh, one of the most important elements here was the hero spear. It sure. is so small. And I, I kept thinking how I can make it noticeable. And I still, uh, I make a lot of shitting uh, to make this happen because I have this uh, camera rail here to follow the spear and also okay. link to this spot so we can always follow the spear. Oh, nice. And yeah, uh, when, let me just turn these guys off. Yeah, if we turn off, it, it, it helps a lot of putting a lot of highlights over here. Amazing. And also I thought it would be nice. Uh, I I have this this point light here only for making it glow, uh, the spear glows in a certain point. Like 
Uh, I think it is here. <sighs> when you render it, uh, the post processing stuff made it, it made catches it nice. go more noticeable. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so, it's a little yeah, swing that, that on it. It reads really yeah, well. Was one thing, and another thing that I really wanted to make it to make this really works was making the I connected um, particle generation on the bottom of the spear so it makes the trail. No, that's really, that's really before... great. The particle generation as well as the trail behind it, it really makes the path of it readable um, and very, very yeah. clear as to what's going on, which is yeah. crucial with something like this. You don't want to miss that detail. Yeah, that's not good. It is so small. So uh, I wasn't, I wanted to make sure that it is in the very center of the composition, mm. the spear. Because, yeah, uh, well, having this hierarchy of uh, of attention, uh, of the main things that you have to notice in, in your mind, you can work on top of that, of that to make sure that it is noticeable. Well, the boss is very big, so it is noticeable. I didn't want to make too much details on it, so it, because he's so big, right? And uh, having too much small details over there might be uh, a little um, noisy, maybe. It mm -hmm. puts a lot, a lot of, um, how can I say that? It's distraction. Yeah, a, a lot of, yeah, the, yeah, the, thank you. Thank you so much. A distraction. And uh, and in, in opposite of that, we have the hero that is just a silhouette. So I have to go back and forth and working with uh, this environment stuff as well uh, was very helpful so I could occlude the boss a little bit so don't show too much of the details in never in every place you look like for example in his arm his chest it is a little dim down right uh, the, the fog is covering a little bit so you don't see too much of him it was intentional just for uh, make the hero a little more readable can you talk a bit about can you show by chance like how you animated the boss Sure. Well, I have the level sequence here is very, very uh, messed up. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I get out of the way, but uh, I have this control rigs here. Uh, so the boss, I didn't use the Rokoko animation. Uh, I, I use the Rokoko animation for the boss just for reference, because he, since he's so big, any small change of position makes a huge difference. So yeah. uh, I prefer do, doing by hand this one. Okay. Uh, so yeah, basically you can. It is totally animatable. Um, have these controls here that comes from the control rig, pre-made control rig that I mentioned before. And yeah, you just keyframe it like in any other software as well. Having these controls here, you can go back and forth from uh, from Blender or from ZBrush, whatever software you're using to make the pol the, the models. You go back to ZBrush and everything works. And for the boss, uh, well, th this is one thing with Nanite, uh, for who doesn't know this, you can't animate Nanite meshes in Unreal, unless if it is linked to a bone or something like that. You can deform, you can't deform Nanite meshes. So this guy is really heavy, uh, in, uh, the geometry is very dense, like this. And this came directly from the brush. So you see very small details here, all in the mesh. And at the same time, it is totally animatable because I imported each piece separated, converted to nanite meshes and parented to the bone, the bone that, that I previously generated in Mixamo. Can you talk about your process for animating this guy like sp specifically um how do you what do you start with do you start with the torso and then from the torso you go to the shoulders and the arms um and kind of work out from there and do the head last um do you start with the key poses and then do secondary after like how does how does your process on that yeah uh i make the key poses First of all, for expose the, the hitting pose and the after hit pose, yeah. Um, and started making keyframes in between so I can hold more each pose. And after that, I um, rearrange it. Um, let, me, let me see if I can do this really quick. Um, actually, it's too messy. Sorry. That's fine. That's <laughs> yeah, fine. but uh, basically, uh, I. I have the, the main poses and I start 
moving keyframes. So, for example, when it hits, I put some a, a little delay on the head. I start in delay a little, uh, some movements as well. Uh, and then after having his main animation uh, ready, of course, I kept tweaking this until the very end of the, the deadline. So, but uh, in between, I started adding these uh, extra animations like um, the shoulder blades. Uh, I also added extra bones to make the controller to control uh, separate the pieces of the armor. Like wow. This one here. Are you adding these bones here. in Unreal? No, actually, no. Uh, I did in Blender. Okay. Uh, right. I, I, I think the less version of Unreal, you can add bones, you can make skinning and rigging. Uh, since from from the scratch inside Unreal, yeah. I didn't try this yet. I'm looking forward to it. But yeah, uh, w when I was doing this project, this feature wasn't ready yet, uh, and I make this secondary animation to uh, emphasize the impact of the the hit. Mm. And yeah, it actually, it was very simple. Uh, I thought it would take too too much more time than I thought it would when I started doing this one. Of, oh man, I have to do this secondary animation. It'd be very hard to make it. No, it, it, it is not. It was very simple to do. Mm, so I was it harder in your mind. <laughs> yeah, Practice definitely. That's yeah. great. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, and and it happens a lot, right? You you start thinking how how do I do this? And sometimes you think that you would be way more work than you thought, and other thing that would be more more simple, like this spear throw, was definitely the most difficult part of this project. All right, so tell me about the spear throw. What, why was it so difficult? Because to me, it just looks like a spline animated along a spline that you drew, and that's that. Like, what, what was so difficult about it? Yeah, uh, well, at first, I tried to make, because you, you have to change the, the parenting of this control okay. here, the spear. So, so from the spear, hand to free, like yeah. free control or spline control. Yeah, at this point, it should be linked to the hand. Yeah. And after this point, it should be linked to the uh, to the camera rail. But the problem is uh, doing this switch, it kind of mess up with the motion blur. So yeah. it, it keeps jumping, the jumping when when make the switch of the parenting. I didn't know how to solve it. So I solved this probably the worst way possible. That animate animating frame by frame by hand. So from here, uh, it is good. Okay, it is following the rail. But before here, you can see there is a, a keyframe for each position okay. of the hand, but it, it is continuing connected to the rail since the beginning. Yeah, that's okay. what's the best way I found it. It is not, uh, yeah, it, it is not very nice to do this. But since it was a very small chunk of the animation that I should be done, do this. So uh, let's try. No, that works. <laughs> works that works. Least. That's probably yeah, what works. I would do. <laughs> yeah. Man, okay. All right. So, but it took you a while to figure that out. You were troubleshooting that problem for days. Ah, uh, four weeks. <laughs> oh my God. Is, yeah. Uh, I just solved this in the very end of the, of the animation, of wow. the deadline. And when did you submit? How many days would you submit on the last day, second to last day? Uh, no, I think it was uh, three or four days before the deadline. Okay. That's healthy. That's good. That's very yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. I didn't so, want to go too crazy with this. When, when did you know that this was all complete? Like, once you finished the spear animation, you're like, this is done, my environment's done, my animation's done. Um, well, was there anything you added at the very end that you were like, you know what, it needs this, it needs that? Oh, yeah, the, I think this is the most difficult part. Because uh, I don't think we, we ever finish a project. We have to call it done. Because otherwise we won't deliver. So yeah, I just thought, well, I think it is good enough. Uh, there are a few things that I, I would probably continue working on, like the animation of her, the fluidity of the movement, some arcs, uh, maybe some some stuff in the background. But yeah, uh, uh, if, if I wouldn't submit, probably I would work in this animation until today. So yeah, it's you a good will always point. find something to 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 tackle and to tweak, and it is an endless process. Yeah, I remember reading something uh, somewhere at some point that there's this thing that like um, you will essentially fill the time you have with the task you need to do. So like if you yeah. have a three day task and you, but you have a week to do it, you're probably going to do that three day task over the week. 
Um, yeah. And I'm like, you know, that, that's a good point. I feel like, especially for me, I, I push everything to the last minute too. So I have to fight against my natural like ability to just naturally go to the last second. Um, yeah. So yeah, time management is tough. So how, how are you yes. managing your time during this project? Are you working on this eight hours a day? Are you working this two hours a day? Like what, uh, what's your setup? Yeah, it wasn't that, it wasn't very hard to manage because I was in between projects uh, in my actual work. So I have spare time to make this in this project and have full attention of it. So yeah, mo most of my time, my time, six, eight hours a day, I was dedicated to this project. The rest of the day I was chilling and resting and wow. recharging. You got and that yeah, uh, was, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't that hard, uh, actually. Uh, so yeah, there was, wasn't too much going on work-wise in between. So what would you, any advice that you would give to people who are watching this and wanting to join the next one in February? What would you tell them? Oh, just, oh, just try guys, because, um, uh, before the, these challenges, uh, before uh, the, the, the last year, uh, I, I was too busy to work on. And, uh, when I have a, a little time, maybe to start doing something for the challenges, uh, I thought that, oh, the, 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 the stake, uh, the, the bar is so high, right? Uh, it is so intimidating seeing so many amazing works. Uh, looking at the breakdown, I was just watching before uh, before we're talking here. It is so amazing and it, it is so easy to get intimidated by that. But the, the worst thing that can happen is you learn with this experience. Even if you don't get in top 100, just try. If you have enough time, of course, uh, just, there's no reason not to try. Agreed, man. 100%. It's only fun. Yeah. It's only fun. Yeah, it's a good challenge. Definitely. And having the chance to talk to people and um, and have this feedback with the community as well, it is so fun as well. It is it's so great to follow other artists as well, what they are doing, talk to them. It is a great opportunity to do this. So, yeah, just try, guys. It is 100%. Very, very fun. 100%. Yeah. Um, I, you guys have heard me shout this out before, but seriously, hop on to the Discord. Come join us. Come hang out. Um, ask Fabricio your questions. Ask all Metatrox your questions. Uh, share your art with us. Join the weekly challenges um, and dive in. Dive with. Dive in with us. It's gonna be good. Um, it's very very fun. So uh, Fabricio, is there anything that you want to share? Like, do you want to play your whole sequence that you made to 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 close it out? Perhaps like you you put together a whole short a little short film. Um, yeah. That would be fun to I see. I can also show my my Da Vinci. Ah, oh, so project. good. <laughs> and uh one one thing that is helps me a lot uh to evaluate if the scene is working or not is zooming out pretty much oh this and is a good see one if you can, yeah. if you can still understand it and also i have this note here that i can just clip the animation and it is so helpful because you, you keep seeing this for weeks right you have um how to say this uh, when you don't see some detail that we're working so much on it and uh you have your you have to have a fresh uh, uh fresh eyes sometimes right but that's yes, why it's 100%. so good showing to the community and close ones as well and this is one one way that i can find that i can kind of reset reset my perception of the job and evaluate if it is working or not that's a solid one yeah, hundred percent. Man, it's beautiful. I love that you took you, the blue to like so the much. green, went with the green red. Is that green? Yeah, I hope it's man. green. Hope I'm saying the right thing. I'm colorblind, so. Yeah, yeah. It is okay, greenish. Good. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> good. You were silent for a second. I was like, oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no Do you want to play play your 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 short film, the final short? Oh yeah. Um, I'll pour one more uh, cachaça shot here. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, me too. I like the banana so far. Oh, awesome. I think cinnamon was it cinnamon? 
Yep. Uh, yes, there was some cinnamon, there was some banana, the other one, I, I think it was coconut. I don't remember. Coconut one's um, thick, man. That's like a, like a syrup. Uh, how do I... <sighs> I wasn't prepared to show the extended uh -oh. drop film. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I will get there. Yeah, it's you. Here it comes. But uh, can I play with audio? If I turn down the audio, it will stream the audio? I don't know. That's a Sotomonte question. No, just video. Uh, now he's saying maybe. Oh. Who knows? <laughs> oh, <laughs> just yeah. turn it up. If we hear it, we hear it. Well, uh, let me know if you can play. I just prepared. So you did all this after, obviously, right? Like I did in the in the last week of the, the final challenge. week. So you did, you were soloing on top of your submission before you even submitted. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh my soul is so loud. <laughs> yeah. Go again. Uh, go again. Go again. Go again. <laughs> so good. Uh, it was very fun because. Uh, I enjoy so much making this project. I was kind of, I was kind of sad that I was finishing it, and I just wanted to do more. And since I, I have already all the assets in Unreal, it was so fast to do this one. I did all the old animation in three days. Jeez, man. Yeah. Oh, and this animation here was the actual motion capture from Rococo that I showed before. Me suiting up with the Rococo. That that's me. <laughs> I yeah. did the hand animation. I didn't hand animate anything in this animation. That's what's up, man. So yeah, if you guys want to follow Fabrizio, obviously you see his socials there. They're also down below in the description. Um, if you want to follow any of the artists here on the on the stream so far. Um, but Fabrizio, man, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, man. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for these challenges. Everybody's involved. It's amazing. It's a great opportunity and experience. I can't Truly. stress this enough. Yeah. Truly, man. It was an honor to meet you, too, at camp. Um, yeah, me, too. <laughs> Likewise. Maybe I'll come down amazing. to Rio and hang out. We'll see. You know, we'll see. Maybe. The yeah. Future. Yeah. Come, come to, Brazil, to L.A. Man. Hit me up if, you, if yeah. you're in L.A. Please yeah, do. <laughs> too. Yeah. We do both ways. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, man. Awesome. Thank you so much, Fabricio. Uh, I really Thank appreciate you, so much. you, man. Thank you so yeah. much, everyone. I'll catch you soon. Bye. Peace out. Mm. very good stuff thank you guys so much for uh for hanging out for enjoying the art together learning about the different workflows um yeah these are always packed with info so like i was saying next week we have a photo scanning challenge that's going to be running for one week on the discord server i'm putting out a video october 7th you guys will watch the whole process. It's a, it's a hoot. It's a good time, uh, an absolute blast. And you guys will have a week to uh, gather some photo scans. So definitely keep your eyes peeled for that. If you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button down below. The bell, hit the bell. I don't know if the bell works. I'm not good with this stuff, guys. Um, but uh, but hang out, y'all. Oh, look at that, Sada Monte. Cue in the little subscribe thing. God dang, so good. Happy to have you, man. Um, we're working on a project too, me and Sotomonte. We're gonna do a little thing for Halloween. So that's gonna be fun. I look forward to that. Lots of good stuff coming along. Um, I'll be doing be doing another um, 3D community challenge in February of next year. So if you guys wanna participate, uh, again, subscribe to the channel is probably the best way. Join the Discord if you're not already. And uh, yeah, stay tuned with us. Create some art with us. It'll be a good time. So I think, guys, that that's it. We hit our artists. Um, we got the announcements. Um, shout outs to Rococo who sponsored this whole thing. Um, go check out Rococo Vision linked below. It's like a no suit needed motion capture two camera motion capture solution. Um, so that'll definitely help you guys out with your animation to get ahead of the game. Um, and to the other sponsors, to Jenga Effects, who very generously 
allowed you guys to use Embergen for free for the month. Um, yeah, incredible, incredible. Kit Bash 3D, giving out awesome kits, um, cargo subscriptions. Um, yeah, absolutely, absolutely fantastic. And Kaft, of course, guys, giving you all shirts, top 100 shirts to the top 100 and uh, codes to the winners, guys. So thank you. Thank you so much. If you guys, I'll hang out with you guys for like five minutes or so. If you have any questions, hit me up. Let's hang out for just a little bit and then we'll call it. Um, and then I'm gonna get some food. My goodness, I can't wait. I cannot wait. It's gonna be a good time. Let's see, do we have anything Anything else? Any other updates? Um, here's a little sneak peek to a video coming out. In, when's it coming out? November-ish. This is your only, this is your only piece of 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 context here is this right here i'll just i'll just hold this here for a second pokemon yellow for the game boy color all right i'm doing a little thing with some game boys and we'll get more info on that as we get closer but i'm very excited very very excited um hit me with the at ponisher here in the chat if you guys have any questions um about our artists about the uh, you know, challenge questions, videos in the future, just personal stuff. I'm hanging out with you guys for five minutes. Thoughts on Unreal 5? I'd say it's about my favorite thing in 3D right now. The mo I get the most satisfaction out of creating photoreal environments inside of Unreal Engine 5. And for this challenge, for Boss Fight, I, I went back to C4D, which I hadn't used in a minute, to be honest, because I've used so much Unreal last year. Um, and I tried to tackle a new style, a uh, cartoony stylized kind of effect. And um, I feel like doing this challenge was very ambitious, especially for hopping into a program I hadn't been using in a minute, and especially for like unearthing a new style. Um, so yeah, no, I, I learned a lot during that process. Um, and I think I originally was like, you know what? I wanna try a new style. Um, and I think if I really wanted to do that, I should have bitten off something a little bit smaller. That's always my problem, I'm always biting off so much. Um, and I think tackling like, you know, say for instance, just modeling this in, in 3D and doing a stylized version of this would have been a great way to test a stylized workflow. I just didn't have it under my belt, you know, so it, I, I didn't make the deadline. It's difficult, but it made me want to get back to Unreal and like play to my strengths, which is photoreal environments. I love it so, so much. Um, let's see, guys. Let's take a look at your questions. Uh, I want this auto rig that Fabricio was using. Yes, me too. Um, I'm going to get that link for him as soon as he drops it. Same for Metatrox. He had that like, um, uh, what is it called? always forget uh, retargeting an auto retargeting setup in Unreal as well. I'm going to get those links in the description under resources tab. Um, so check out the video later. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, Elfin Show. He says that was a pr your problem with the challenge is you bit off way more than you can chew and had to submit something not great. But hey, look, that's okay. You, at least you submit it. You got to the point where you could submit something and you probably learned a lot along the way as well. And that's, that's the most important thing is learning something along the way. Whether you submit or don't submit, can you think back on your experience and get something out of it? What can you get out of the month you spent working on this art that you either submitted, didn't submit, got into top 100 or not, um, got into the all renders or not, whatever, you know, can you go back and kind of break down your experience and see what you can apply to the future? What, what are the things that you learned along the way? Because I think, um, you know, you, you've probably heard this said a bunch before, but um, a failure not learned from is a true failure. Uh, a failure learned from uh, a failed experience that you that you learn something from is a win, right? So how can you take maybe a failure in your mind 
and turn it into a win. And obviously failure is very harsh and intense wording, but I think you guys get the point, right? Hmm. Dude, modeling the Game Boy cartridge with just displacement maps, that's insane. But also, very possible. Um, yeah, Substance Designer is ridiculous. It's not a 3D modeling software, but uh, it can be used to create, uh, yeah, not just textures. It's an incredible one. Do I know if studios are using UE5 currently? I don't know, I, I'm not sure. Like I'm not tapped into the pulse of the studios. Um, I'm sure they are, yeah, I'm, I'm sure they are. I do know, um, I believe it is used in like a lot of different like sports, uh, kind of live sports setups. I do know that that's, that's a thing. But beyond that, I mean, I'm, I'm sure. I can't say for a fact though. Besides games, obviously it's used in video games. One of my favorite games of all time, Stray. It was made using Unreal Engine. And uh, there's a great video on the making of that game. If you guys don't know, Stray is the cat game. It's like a seven hour campaign. I beat the thing three times. It is probably one of my favorite games in, in recent years, easily. Um, and they did the whole thing in Unreal Engine and watching the breakdown, there's like a 15 minute little video on YouTube about the making of the game. And it shows and talks about all the different challenges that the studio, it's just two people really at first, it's just two people. It talks about all the challenges that they faced um, and the things that they had to overcome using Unreal Engine. I'm like, man, I always get like amped when I see the Unreal Engine logo on a game I'm about to play. I'm like, wow, this is really inspiring. Like uh, Sifu, that game was Unreal Engine. Stray was Unreal Engine. A ton more, of course, but it's always like, that's the program I use. Maybe I could do this, you know? It, it gives me a lot of um, inspiration seeing that. Perfect anime, don't you worry. You missed out on the boss fight, but it's okay. Um, I don't know why. Maybe it's just you weren't checking YouTube at the time. Maybe the bell thing doesn't work because YouTube can be jacked up. Who knows? Um, but yeah, like I said, subscribe, come by the channel often, uh, hang out on the Discord. If you're on both of those, you shouldn't be able to miss it. But it's in February, the next one's in February. That's why I'm trying to tell you guys ahead of time. Dude, that's so funny. Your grandma liked the alternate reality challenge the most. She loves seeing what people did with the round object in the corner. Could challenges popularity benefit from sticker templates? I don't understand the last part. From Oh, from stricter templates. I, I don't know, maybe. We always go back and forth trying to figure out the templates, me and the moderators on the Discord server. Um, we're like less strict, more strict, uh, characters, no characters, but we try and do a different one every time. We don't wanna put out the same album, every album release. We want it to be different every time and reinvent every time. So that's the idea. But that's funny you said your grandma because my whole like, the thing I always say is that the all renders montages are like more for the artists. And I know, th I think this also came from Soda Monte too. The all renders is like for the artists, but the top 100 is for the world. And like the way I see it is your grandma should be able to enjoy the top 100 video. Anyone should be able to enjoy the top 100 video. And the all renders, which of course lots of people enjoy too, um, but I know the artists get really excited about that one as well. Um, but I, I'm glad your grandma likes it. Say hello to your grandma for me. I'm glad that she enjoys the challenges. <laughs> That's really fun. Ah, oh, let's see. Um, I'm curious to know if you do anything else other than YouTube and 3D that you spend your time on. My goodness, yes, yes. I would go insane if I just spent my time on YouTube and 3D. Yes, this is my full-time job. This is what I do for a living, uh, is run this YouTube channel and host challenges and teach people about art and whatnot and how to use programs. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm writing a feature film right now. I've been writing it for a while, actually writing it with my wife. So we're working together um, to put this this very, very fun, very silly movie together. Um, directing is my passion. I'm doing all, all of the VFX, all of the 3D 
is um for me it's a way to just be better equipped as a director and i fell in love with 3d very early on i fell in love with 3d and vfx um before i wanted to make a movie um it was just so much fun for me and it was a, and it was an immediate payoff and it wasn't until a couple years into doing vfx that i decided you know i want to justify these vfx i don't want these vfx shots to just be vfx reels i want to do vfx for um i want i i, I want to see vfx serve a purpose a greater purpose to tell a larger story so then that's when i started get to get into writing short films um shooting them doing the VFX, vfx for them editing all that stuff right that's where cardboard warfare came from uh the whole series that's where i started doing um, like little, uh, short film, maybe you'd say fan film, um, shorts for different video games like Sleeping Dogs, Killzone, Wolfenstein, a lot of which were like official for the game, which was so cool. Um, that was back before I was a part of Rocket Jump with Freddy, before I was even a part of Corridor, but all of those people were there. All of those people were, we were all friends at the time and we were communicating um online just like you know we're communicating on discord server right same idea and we'd be helping each other out with different effects problems and 3d problems um and showing each other our short films and being like oh you know like i would do this here do this there and it was all because of the community that we all get so inspired so i think it's cool that we still have this um, this massive community i can't believe there's like seventy thousand plus people on the discord server which is that's insane. I never would have thought for a second that like doing all this stuff would, would amount to that. It was never my goal. It just kind of happened. Um, so it's pretty, pretty nuts. Winbush, shout outs to you, man. Shout outs. So Winbush, you were in Korea. This man was up in Korea um, for part of some like 3D conference and got to meet the, the governor of Seoul, I believe, and got these custom like sake soju glasses with his his face and the governor's face like together imprinted onto the <laughs> onto the the soju bottle i was like dude that is so funny i love it we missed you at camp though man we definitely missed you at camp it was a good time really really good time elvin show so how's the feature film coming along man it's hard it is probably one of the hardest things i've done in a minute I'm so used to immediate payoff. That's why I love 3D so much. Um, and like, that's why I love Unreal so much is you get that immediate payoff. With a short, uh, or with a feature film, writing a feature film is probably one of the hardest things I've ever done. And it takes so much persistence to keep moving forward. Um, because every day isn't guaranteed to be a great day of writing. You have to really push through the difficult days of writing and doing something that's so difficult, you naturally like don't wanna do it, right? You don't wanna wake up and just be met with difficulty, but that's what it's requiring. Like it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be hard. And it has been hard, but it's also been great because we've made progress and um, like I'm going as far, I'm doing whatever I gotta do to motivate myself to keep going, to keep the daily streak going, writing every day at 8 a.m. We write, me and my wife, and it's like, we'll go as far as we got a sticker board going. If we wrote today, we get a sticker. And I wanna see that sticker board full at the end of, you know, three months or whatever. And we'll start a whole new sticker board. And like, I wish life had um, stats video game stats. How many miles have I walked in my life? How many hours have I spent writing? How many um, hours have I spent meditating? Um, like, I want to know my life stats. I wish there was something that I could tap into that would show me all my stats because, I don't know, it's really inspiring to like look at all the, the stuff that you that you've put into you know all the payoff and um yeah i'm kind of just rambling at this point but life stats yeah the the film's going great though um we're making daily progress on it and it's really fun it's super goofy 
I can't wait to tell you guys about it. Oh, I want to tell you guys about it so bad, but I can't yet. It's not ready. Um, I want to get to the point where I can do a proof of concept, film that, release it, put up a Kickstarter and see what we can do. See what we can, what we can generate. Maybe get the help of some studio to help fund it too, but having it be crowdfunded, self-made kind of thing with the community would be, would be the dream. Um, I think it would be, I think it would be incredible. It's gonna be a fun one. The plan is to walk you guys through the process of the whole movie. Once the movie gets to a point where like the ball is rolling into production, I wanna be shooting videos on like, how do you write a movie? How did I write my first feature? Um, how would you produce a scene like this? How are you gonna get resources together to like do an action scene like this? Um, and I wanna cover all that stuff on the channel. Right, um, because for me, filmmaking is the passion, and I want to include that on the channel as well. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys could uh, could benefit from that as well. So, that's the goal. That's the goal. Yep, just hit play. That's exactly what I'm talking about. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Um, hitting all aspects of production: the writing, the shooting, the producing, the creating music for a movie. Like all that, I want to cover all of that, and just be able to be like, here is how you can make a movie yourself. Go for it, right? Um, but yeah, that's the idea. Oh, so Metatrox, looks like Metatrox just hit me with that retargeting plugin. Fabricio hit me with the control rig plugin. That's what's up. I'm gonna update these um, right after we call it. I'm probably gonna call it here, guys. Probably gonna call it. Um. Thank you guys for joining me. I really appreciate it. Please, please, please keep your eyes peeled for next week. I got a really fun photo scanning video that involves all you guys. We're gonna do a week long challenge. It's gonna be really fun. Um, and I'll be out there with you. It's gonna be sweet. So stay tuned, y'all, stay tuned. Uh, I, I think I've talked myself out, guys. I think that's everything. I'll, I'll see you on the Discord. I'll see you here next week on the channel. Thank you so much, guys, for joining. We're learning from all these artists. I know I learned a ton. Um, yeah, keep going. Keep that spark alive, y'all. I will catch you guys on the next one at some point next week. Yeah, I'll see you next week. Later, guys. Peace out. <laughs>